and development arrangement. The census and revenue allocation that disadvantages the southeast, that is the citizenship question. The Igbos think they become visitors everywhere all over the uh, country. When it is time for census, the southeast complain that they are about the only ethnic group that have maybe a majority of their people living outside of their homeland. And that during census, their populations are counted in the states where they live. Imagine a state, I mean, and then population becomes basis for sharing the oil money in Abuja. When it is time for that, you count them in there, you don't ask for state of origin in the census. But then, you use also the population to get their locations. But when it is time to share anything else, you remind them that they don't belong here, as the case may be. So there have been issues about citizenship uh, question, and so on and so forth. So, in other words, this system, it's not just the southeast or the Igbos that complain. It has not worked for Nigeria. And my thesis is that even if any government, including this one, just appoint, have all the political appointments from the one village, my thesis is that the life of the average person in that village will not change. Just rewind it. Rewind it again. And think the other way. The last regime, we had an Abel Azikiwe as president. We had secretary to government. We had minister of finance and uh, coordinated minister on the economy. We had all of this deputy senate president, this, that, and so on and so forth. Almost all, most of the financial institutions headed by people from the southeast. And yet, there is no motorable federal highway in Igbo land. This thing is an elite game, as far as I'm concerned. The issue of who and whatever and so on and so forth is not taking us anywhere. And unless we get to the heart of it. So, it seems that there is a consensus today. There is a consensus. If you take it much broadly, the North, I mean, so called North, if you calculate the number of years they were in power, but essentially, poverty is still predominantly a northern phenomenon. So, you know, that you control this and a few billionaires are met here and there and so on and so forth means absolute nothing. The ordinary man in Nigeria is, has not benefited, is getting worse off by the current system that we have. But there is a consensus now on restructuring. And in that case, uh, Ford dealer would argue that Biafra becomes a metaphor, a metaphor for agitation by oppressed people for justice, equity, and fairness. It hasn't worked for anybody. If you look at President Buhari recently said he also supports amendment of the constitutional devolution. If you read the APC manifesto, it says, quote, as a change agent, APC intends to cleanse our closet to haul the dangerous drift of Nigeria to a failed state with a conscious plan for post-oil economy in Nigeria. To achieve this laudable program, APC government shall restructure the country, devolve power to the units with the best practices of federalism, and eliminate unintended paralysis of the center. End of quote. This is the government in power that controls 23 states. This is the APC manifesto. So, and the Southern People's Assembly talk about the same thing. The Afeni Ferre's position on the National Conference, if you read it, talks about the same thing. The National Conference report talks, supported by PDP, the same thing. So what is holding us? I must say the goal of this bit should be political stability and economic prosperity. In my view, a competitive federalism. We can write a book on this aspect of competitive federalism. Compared to the First Republic, when everybody had theirs, they had the resources, the, especially on revenue, a fiscal federalism. We've argued before, give everybody, leave everybody their own thing, let them pay taxes to the center. This umbilical cord where Abuja will set wage for everybody all over the country 
and so on and so forth. It was for a time when oil money paid for it. Not anymore. Even in the U.S., you may have read about the governor of Maine that the wife of the governor had to take a job in a restaurant to augment their income because given the state of men, the salary of the governor was not enough for, their, for them to survive on, and the wife had to take a job in a restaurant. The governor of men salary cannot be the same as the mayor of New York, and so on and so forth, but here we've done all of this, Abuja controls, anywhere, um, that's for another day. But what is holding us now, what I call as matter arising, is that the detail, devil is in the details. Let the debate begin. What exactly do we mean by restructuring? The National Conference Report, for example, is a beginning, but in my view, doesn't go much. It talks about creating more states, which misses the point. It's still more of the same. We are saying the ones that you have are not viable. Twenty-something states today cannot pay salaries. So what are we talking about? Or should we go back to the QMS Constitution, the proposal of six zonal structure, as the federating units. What model of federation? Should we use the UAE, United Arab Emirates system, or which one are we going? Let us get to work and begin to think. Some people propose, and I agree, that we need a new constitution negotiated by the people of Nigeria. And my thesis is that if this is the only achievement of President Buhari, he would have been greatest statesman ever in the mold of Abraham Lincoln. But we need to get this done, that the people of Nigeria will have to get together and negotiate a new constitution for themselves. Second, or the third point, is leadership failure in Igbo land. It raises fundamental questions if you read uh, Chude's book on the, the, the collapse of failure of uh, leadership in Igbo land and the search for the new one, or whatever. It's in that light it agitates your mind when we talk about the Igbo presidency. What does that actually mean? Is it to have one, somebody wearing a red cap in the villa, or what? If all that we say, even within the states, a governor is first his village, his local government, then his senatorial zone, so that he can be a chelozwa of his um, on um, local government or his village and so on and so forth, then let the others care. Is that the kind of leadership we are talking about about Nigeria or in, in the new Biafra, as it were? And um, we have seen it, like I said, about people occupying offices and so on and so forth and still nothing. So the question is, the same contradictions in Nigeria are also there within Igbo land. We cry of marginalization at the larger Nigeria, but there is also cries of marginalization within. There is the identity question within. There is the citizenship and indigenship question within. How many other Igbos live in Aba and in Abia, for example? But I don't know. Two years or three years ago, that was the indigenship thing, that all non-Abia citizens were sacked from the, the... But these people had lived there, worked there, paid their taxes there. They, are, they were counted as part of Abia in the census. You collect revenue, bec uh, more revenue because of them. But then, no, you can't work in there. You are not an indigent. So while we are pointing one finger there, ladies and gentlemen, Look closely. The other three are saying, let's get it here. And so how can this new leadership emerge? With very, and then of course the entry fee is very high. The fourth, the new Biafranism, and that is my last point. And let me say that Nigeria has wittingly or unwittingly dragged the Biafran issue from the periphery into the mainstream discussion. Nam De Kano, in my view, threw a bet, and Nigeria took it. Today, he is the most popular political prisoner. Zoo.
lies and deceit. If not for the coming of IPOB, of Radio Biafra, all of you would have lived and died in the ignorance that Ojuku caused a war. That's what they were writing. Britain helped them to write it. Ojuku was a rebel, a secessionist, because we had no media. That is why they're paying Facebook billions upon billions of US dollars to stop this truth from coming out. Did Ojuku cause any war? Go on his alive, go and ask him. Did Ojuku cause any war? Ojuku went and negotiated restructuring with you. In Aburi. You came back. Britain told you not to agree. Because Britain realized that all the component units of Britain knows that if you go back to regionalism, you have economic growth. The country will do very well. But Britain doesn't want it. That was why they even instigated the Nzoguku, so called Nzoguku, saying they will bring Awolo to become the head of state. They knew what was going to happen. They wanted to truncate the economic miracle of Dr. Michael Hello, But what I'm telling you are fast. Go and investigate for yourself. In the East, you had the fastest growing economy in the whole world, over 40% every year. In the West, Abolo was performing his own miracle as well. Even in the North, Amadebola and Tafabole were doing very well. You had all those massive industries in the North. You even had Alamajiris that were employed in the North, meaningfully employed, gainfully employed. They were all doing very well. Britain said, no, for us to control these people, we need to impoverish them. Let us introduce this war. That was a coup by Nzogu. And after that, there was the massacre of, as usual, massacre of our people in the north. Ujuku said, I have to secure my land and my people. They said, no, let's go to Aburi to discuss it. Ujuku went to Aburi and agreed, restructuring. That's something now you're asking for, to tell you how foolish Nigerians are. They're very foolish. That same nonsense you're asking for now was discussed many years ago. Ujuku sat down in Aburi with Gowon and decided that Regionalism was the best way forward, restructuring, going back to who you were, 1963 constitution, 1960-1963 constitution. Be on your own and pay tax to the central government, as they have in America, as they have even in Britain. Britain, you have Scotland that is almost independent, Wales, the same thing, everybody is free, but Britain doesn't want the something they're enjoying to happen in Nigeria. Why? Ask yourself that question. Anybody telling you about one Nigeria is your enemy? I prove it to you now. Ujuku negotiated devolution, regionalism. The North will be on their own, the West on their own, even Middle Belt on their own, sorry, Midwest on their own, and then the East on their own. It's the same one Nigeria. On, on their way to the airport, before they boarded the aircraft, a call came from Lagos, from the British High Commissioner in Lagos, to go on, telling go on not to agree. After having signed the agreement, that same go on you're looking at today. God kept me alive so that he can witness the destruction he will bring upon that very zoo called Nigeria. Go on said no. Do you know all the journalists in Nigeria, none of them have ever gone to has ever gone to go on to ask him why did he say no to Aburi? Aburi was restructuring. None of those agitating for restructuring right now has ever gone to go on or gone to Nigeria to say, but Ujuku negotiated restructuring. What happened? They came back and they said, no. Ujuku said, okay, so you want to continue to kill my people all over the place? No. Because of that, I'll declare Biafra. Today, they have brainwashed all of you with the perverse notion and thinking that somehow Ujuku is responsible for causing a war when opposite is the case. If not now, that after many years of hammering on this very topic, it has now sunk into the skull of the people. That go on was the aggressor, not to you. That's how Nigeria is. Always blaming the victim. And we lost over 5 million people during that very genocidal war. They killed over 5 million Biafrans. They wanted to wipe us away from the face of this very earth. But we survived it. And we are here today. Those they gave birth to, they have come. And this time with a wrath that you cannot even begin to imagine. And Biafra must come. It must come.
There are two things plaguing them in the zoo. Okay. Biafra must come. Biafra must come, of course. It is our slogan. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Great and wonderful people of Biafra, lovers of freedom all over the world. I greet you. I, con I, know, I welcome you according to your time zone. While you are joining us, share the video. Invite others to join. We are live and direct. We are live on YouTube at Judge Money Block Africa. We are live on Twitter at Judge Money C. We are live on Facebook at Judge Money Official, at Judge Money Slash TV, at Judge Money Blog, at other Facebook platform. Um, while you are joining us, share the video, invite others to join. It is very, very important. Of course, you can see what we are here to do this evening. It is going to be quite interesting because of if you look around if you look on our if you look at, at the poster that we have right in front of the screen on the other hand is joe biden and in the middle of it it is your so-called president or your president select on the other hand is mr in Asorok, which you see what is titled on that picture there from the tunubus one you see during the prayer section special prayer will be offered for the peace and unity and progress of nigeria now you see that is exa exactly what we're going to reflect on on the other you know top right you will see mohammed buhari move to strengthen nigeria relationship with iran i've been looking for this actually you know this picture but i couldn't find it in a while and down there on the left um lower uh, left you will see wale showinka of course all of us are aware of whom wale showinka is wale showinka is a legend as long as that zoo country called nigeria is concerned he is a legend and there is no way you can take it from him he is a prominent nigerian playwright a poet and political activist who recently made some controversial political statement against certain nigeria presidential candidates so no matter how you feel or think about this guy called Walosho Inka, you should not forget or you will never take away from him that he is, he is a legend, a Nigerian legend. In his um, poet, literature, and uh, recently a political activist. So we are going to be talking about the recent backlash he is getting from the comment he made against Dati Group or OB, Obedient Group on social on on his interview with I believe Arise TV. We are going to bring that one. We are going to bring exactly the reason why he actually came in to make such statement. On the other hand, you see Ada Biafra. Ada Biafra. I know that so many of them, they have not spoken about Biafra, but they have Biafra blood in them, and it will never, they will never deny it. Or maybe they are still in denial of understanding the fact that they are Biafrans, and Biafra is the only way. Ada Biafra, you are welcome. Ada Biafra, we are going to talk about your letter to Mr. President Joe Biden. And the reaction and the backlash you are getting from some of these APC affiliated and uh, other one Nigerianist against your letter to Mr. President of America, of the United States, rather. So, of course, you have gotten 
you know, an attack. You have gotten an attack, especially the one we are going to be reflecting on. It is the one, that one of, you know, Tinubu's new media personnel, which is Femi Famikai or Femi Fanekayode. So, he is the one leading the attack on Ada Biafra, Chima Amanda Adichie, a legend based in the United States, you know, whom her in level of her intellect is incomparable to anyone in that zoological republic called Nigeria. And that is the reason why we are going to bring her, you know, discuss her letter to Mr. President. While we are discussing her letter to Mr. President, of course, you have seen during the backlash on, against um, Wolo Showinka, you have seen that autopilot, the chief infiltrator, Eberima in Finland, wrote in his page that he is calling on a debate. He is calling for Showinka to come to debate with him. Now, you know, what caught my attention on that article that he wrote or on that um, statement, I will call it, um, will I call it, um, I will call it, um, uh, let me call it statement he made that he want to, or, you know, or request, will I say request he made, he want to be on a debate with Wallace Owinka. And now he wrote about being on a debate with Waloso Winka and he said he want to tell him the reason why there must be a freedom for Biafra or there must be disintegration of Nigeria. I, I might not be able to quote him verbatim, but in that regard, I will say to my, I know I've been actually contemplating and asking myself, doing uh, you know a lot of plus and minus, to understand how necessary is it really for Eberima in Finland, who claim he is fighting for Biafra restoration, freedom for the people, and who actually call for no election in Biafra land during the election campaign. And he, we, if not that we actually make sure that we sideline him to make sure that we notify Biafrans across the world, home and abroad, that this guy does not mean well for any of them because the only thing he wanted to do was to actually make a move that they will blame it on IPOB and Mazen Namdekano. So we make sure we nullify all that call of him after negotiating with Tinubu's boys in the name of forming alliance for Biafra and Biafra restoration. So now the same person who is Waloso Winka that is against the OB that you wanted to boycott election for him not to actually emerge as a Nigeria president before January, before February 25, 2023. It is on his behalf now, so-called, because if you want to talk about interview with, or debate with Waloso Winka, or media debate with Waloso Winka, that means you are actually now fighting Waloso Winka or you are actually, you know, with those who are giving the statement of Waloso Winka a backlash in the media against obedient movement. So what exactly are you now trying to defend Obi for? Obi that you have done everything in order to make sure he is not successful. So this is actually what is boggling my mind. I just f thought I will bring it to you. We are, might, we are going to be having an interactive session while we are at it. So but by the time we get there, I want you to pay very good attention before we get there on what we are going to do this 
evening morning and afternoon depending on where you are share the video invite others to join we are live and direct it is it is 10 minutes on top of the hour regardless of where you are in biafra land it is 10 minutes on top of eight o'clock uh, okay it's 10 past eight in biafra land the land of elohim where there is zero latitude and zero longitude so we are here right to make sure we bring you know we actually keep make the record straight number one many people have actually written a lot of you know things against wallace showing i am going to start from there there has been many writings but before we go to what people ha are saying about Walosho Winka, let us actually bring to you the statement of Walosho Winka because I am going to try to wait to see the, you know, this broadcast, if it is going to be stable or if they are going to uh, act against us before I actually bring more people into the program. But while we are at it, let us actually you know let us actually you know look at what we have now let me show you exactly the reason why wala showinka is receiving all these attacks from the media space and i will show you one of the attack that caught my eye that i said i must speak about it listen Listen to this. Which part or what part of? Um, I know that Facebook will start kicking you out. If Facebook kick you out, bring yourself back up because this is the game they play all the time. Bring yourself back up. Continue to share the video wherever you are watching from. Don't mind them because this is been their. This is their their game how they play it let me be sure i hope we are coming out clear all right now let me bring to you this wallow showing cars um where is uh okay this is what we are going to be looking into right now I am going to bring it uh, in now pay very good attention pay very good attention to hear what is the reason why Walosho Winka was getting backlash Senator Dati Ahmed's statement was unbecoming ah. Ah, okay nearly the totality listen the interviewer asked him several times he said what will you do if the Supreme Court judgment is against you, if the interpretation which you are offering about the constitutional aspect of this election, if it is against that of the Supreme Court and they find against you. And he kept saying, no, it's not even open to analysis. Because the word says and, and it's very clear. And the Supreme Court in its wisdom had better give this, in other words, his interpretation. I mean, this is, this is trying to dictate to the supreme arbiter of the nation. Whatever you think of the Supreme Court, it is an institution we, we all uh, revert to sooner or later. If not today, then tomorrow. If not about this election, maybe about the next election. But Dachi kept saying, no, the Supreme Court has got in its wisdom to agree with me. That kind, that is what is known as fascistic language. It is not acceptable. And for me, it alienates people. It alienates even supporters. I know this for a fact. People come to, you know how re I relate to young people. I relate to those who have found certain problems with the spokespeople of this particular movement. I'm not interested in the other ones. Everybody knows the other movements. Well, there's a new boy on the, on the block, as the expression stays. And many of us have been waiting for that new kid on the block. And so we have a stake in it. 
and wherever it seems to be going wrong, we're going to tell the truth. Which part or kid. what part and of Senator Dati Ahmed's statement was on the committee? That's all. But go and watch that tape all over again. Ah, okay. Introduce that tape the totality. to any Listen, kind of the interviewer neutral jury. Asked him several uh, times. Members of whom don't even know anything. What will you do about if the uh, Nigerian Supreme Court judgment? Talk about body language. The talk about vocal language. Talk about the actual which are offering about the constitutional oh, aspect of this election. It, this is it is intimidation. And it's not acceptable. I refuse to be part of against that, that kind of, of language. the Supreme Court and they find against you. And he kept saying, no, it's not even open to analysis. Because the word says and, and it's very clear. And the Supreme Court, in its wisdom, had better give this, in other words, his interpretation. I mean, this is, this is trying to dictate to the supreme arbiter of the nation. Whatever you think of the Supreme Court, it is an institution we, we all uh, revert to sooner or later. If not today, then tomorrow. If not about this election, maybe about the next election. But that he kept saying, no, the Supreme Court has got in its wisdom to agree with me. That kind, that is what is known as fascistic language. It is not acceptable. And for me, it alienates people. It alienates even supporters. I know this for a fact. People come to me, you know how re I relate to young people. I relate to those who have found certain problems with the spokespeople of this particular movement. I'm not interested in the other ones. Everybody knows the other movements. But there's a new boy on the, lo on the block as the expression stays. And many of us have been waiting for that new kid on the block. And so we have a stake in it. And wherever it seems to be going wrong, we're going to tell the truth to that new kid. And the supporters who also say they have allied thinking with us, that's all. But go and watch that tape all over again. Introduce that tape to any kind of neutral jury uh, members of whom don't even know anything about the uh, Nigerian situation. Talk about body language, talk about vocal language, talk about the actual text of Dati's pronouncement. This is intimidation. And it's not acceptable. I refuse to be part of that kind of language. Thank you very much for that sound, Gozier material. Thank you very much. Um, it is now, of course, so many of you will recall the statement made by Dati, the vice presidential candidate to obedient movement. Now he said that if Tinubu is sworn in as a president, of Nigeria that it is going to be the end of democracy in Nigeria and now which is what which was one of the things he said and he also said exactly what Walesho Winka was reacting to Walesho Winka said that the the speech of Dati alienate people and, uh, you know, Walosho Winka is a person who is very, very, you know, in, supposed to, you know, he is a very, very, you know, educated man. He is very educated man. And he is now an old person who is supposed to be, you know, making sure that his legacy, his legacy does not have any stain on it. 
So, I don't know, will I say that he is coming towards this dimension because of one thing or the other. I don't want to actually go the way the Nigerianist, one Nigerianist who are believing that there is something is going to come out of one Nigeria. I don't want to go the way they responded to him. I want to respond to him differently. As a freedom fighter and a political activist. Because I understand exactly what this guy is doing here. What he did here. Now, number one. He talked about alienation, which is something I do not agree with Waloso Winka. That is what, or something I don't agree with him. Because if you talk about alienation or your voice that is alienating, it means that you are in denial that Nigeria is actually divided. Nigeria is actually marginalizing part of, you know, so-called part of it. It is not actually the Dati's um, statement that is alienating, you know, it is actually Nigeria and what it stands for. Because when you talk about alienation, you don't need to hear that is um, speech in order for you to know that Biafran people are actually isolated in Nigeria. We don't need anybody to remind us that we are isolated. We are marginalized. We are being treated differently like a third class citizen of the zoological republic called nigeria which actually led to the agitation which actually also led to Igbo presidency even though calling on Igbo presidency does not make sense if there is actual something called you know resolution or you know that will that nigeria is going to come to a resolution that will help it help her to thrive Calling on saying Igbo presidency, it is actually doesn't make sense. But, however, it is what it is. We have come to this point. So, in this point, we are going to now respond to it. When Walesha Winka talk about people feeling or making people feel isolated. I don't think that anybody in their right state of mind, any Biafran in their right state of mind, need Dati to speak to channel television in order for them to know that they are being marginalized. It is already there, and um, I'm actually disappointed that Walosho Winka is in denial of it. I am disappointed that he's in denial of it. And, uh, you know, upon this, I have seen so many, you know, people who responded to him. Like, um, there is a, a write-up from somebody, which I am going to read. I am going to read it, for, you know, for you. Because I want to bring them together before I actually give my own opinion. Nigeria have overrated Walesho Winka. That, that is an article but it, that is written by it is written by you know somebody that is very good at writing. Just read it. I will mention the name after the reading. Nigeria have overrated Walesho Winka, someone who initiated pirate cult. That has taken over 1.5 million Nigerian youth is not a, re a responsible man, but a mere overrated gangster. He instituted a social evil cult that has a re that have eliminated. One moment, let me bring 
Let me bring people, more people into the program before we proceed, please. Let us uh, get more people into the program before we proceed. Because it is very, very important what we are doing right now. So, let me continue to read. So he said that, but a mere overrated gangster, he instituted a social evil court that have eliminated over 1.8 million Nigeria youth at various universities across Nigeria. Waloso Winka may have good command of English language, but Ibo, Ibo Ayaka, oh, Ibo Ayaka, I believe he's the writer, is above him in intellectualism. No language is superior than the other. I agree with you. And knowing a particular language is the best yardistic, is the best, is the best yardistic to score yardstick to score intelligence. Many Chinese that have invented invented many things don't speak or know English language. Does it make Woloso Winka ahead of a Chinese inventor? Of course, the answer is no. During the Biafra genocide against Ndibo in 1967 to 1970, many weapons used by Biafran soldiers were locally made by some university graduates and undergraduates. Does speaking English make Waloso Winka ahead of Igbo engineers whose intellectualism made it possible to invent war weapons during the war? Waloso Winka lifestyle have not even modeled Nigeria society, but it was just social ill and life of gangsterism. He introduced in the university system. Waloso Winka Nobel Prize was a mere honor on, on misconception of intellectualism. He lacked nobility and integrity. To what extent has Waloso Winka literally literal, um, literal work, work tackled or solved the problem of Nigeria? Just one moment. I am um, one moment. Let's see what we got here. All right. Um, let's do this. Let's bring more people into the program before we proceed. So I can see we are stable. Okay. There we go. So, let me continue to read. For those of you who are joining us, you have option to rewind to see where we have, uh, you know, what we have actually achieved, but we are just starting. So, let me continue to read the article written against Walosho Winka, which is back, you know, part of the backlash that he is getting after his, you know, media statement against Dati and Obedient Movement, which he talked about you know, alienating, you know, when, it, you know, the reason why I believe people are giving him this backlash is because of, most importantly, when he talk about making people feel isolated. Of course, we all know and we are aware that Igbo people, Biafrans, they have been felt you know feeling isolated or they have been marginalized so they are isolated in that country called nigeria so they don't feel the sense of belonging they don't actually you know imagine a country that has been independent since 1960 this part of this nation has never made a president from that country called nigeria so that is the reason why this backlash is coming out because he said that that is statement is alienating so that is the reason why i am reading one of this backlash why okay let me continue what has he offered on the table of national cause those literal work works which of 
the sector of the government of Nigeria has caused effectiveness. Even our education system is the most poorest in Africa. Ghana is now ahead of Nigeria. Walesho Winka has not led an effective peace mission in Nigeria. In the political landscape of Nigeria, Walesho Winka is effective and unproductive. Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize. What has it offered to the economic or political survival of Nigeria? Walosho Winka is among men of many awards, yet living in a stinking, corrupt country for 88 years. No economic or political impact, yet at the very last minute of his life, he could key into a new productive Nigeria. All he can do is to speak grammar. Nobel Prize that could shape the political and economic future of Nigeria is an ordinary mere title. Walosho Winka is an ordinary play, uh, play writer whose works couldn't add value to political economic growth of Nigeria. This old man of Walosho Winka's type should bow down in shame their generation is a huge and uh, irredeemable disappointment to nigeria comrade ibo ayaka o ibo ayaka so this is the author of this you know piece that i just read to you that was written against wale showinka so in this regard, I want you now to know, this is part of it, there are many more. Even from Charlie Boy, he said that this man, he used to respect this man, but right now he is no longer having any atom of respect for Waleso Winka because Waleso Winka is a man who is supposed to be standing on the side of the truth because he has been respected by so many young people and so many Nigerians in the you know to the extent that he formed a gangster group which is called um, pirates so many people young people join and today without knowing ex exactly what was the reason why he formed such group because this group I don't believe that they are representing what they are actually put up out there for i don't want to emphasize on that because i don't know the reason why he formed such group but if such group has taken the life of 1.8 million youth according to the writer i don't think that the group meant well for anybody in such environment so wala showinka if he is actually overrated we are going to actually find out this evening because he said that somebody's opinion is going to make people feel isolated and you know it is actually bringing me to the fact that he is in denial that people are isolated in Nigeria that people are actually you know isolated marginalized you know intimidated at all time in nigeria so i don't think you need any politics politician to speak something that will make you feel isolated in nigeria so that is exactly part of the you know you know his argument that i don't agree with now coming to the general argument of walosho winka walosho winka is in support of his brother called tinubu Regardless of the health condition of this his brother, he is in support of his brother. And I want us to understand that you must support your own. You know, you must support your own. And that is exactly what Yorubas has been using in order to, you know, be one step ahead of the Biafrans. Because Waleso Winka is supporting his own, regardless of the crime that their own is committing. He is supporting them regardless of the election rigging, regardless of all the atrocities committed inside that Nigeria. In the name of election, 
he stood to support his own people. That is exactly what I am seeing here because so many of you are seeing a man who is overrated. I, my, I, you know, if you say he's overrated, I will not disagree with you. I will not agree with you because if you have, if, uh, having seen his activities in the, you know, in the recent, you know, years, you will understand that knowing English and speaking it eloquently or writing it elo eloquently does not make you of course an intellect because if such people are supposed to make a difference and uh, you know having known that he is a one nigerianist i don't think he's supposed to be on the side that will make people to feel you know alienated because that is exactly what he is preaching because whatever he is doing right now he is doing what make people to feel you know isolated in nigeria that is exactly what he's saying because he is now promoting somebody whom the oh, the people say that they did not vote for because he, in a democratic dispensation, of course, we know that power belongs to the people and power is given by the people. So I don't know if there is, you know, any thing. Okay, just one minute, one minute. I am trying to find my... Okay, we are, we are here, we are live. So... So, having seen that he is in his age and having been celebrated in Nigeria and so many people look up to him as an intellect which he is actually positioned to be, to make a difference in the midst of noise, he will come out and speak as an intellectual, as an elderly person, as a well-renowned person, in the you know in the society in order to make sure that he maintain his legacy but what he did is to come and be in denial of people feeling isolated in nigeria that is where i am standing upon in order to respond to him because whatever he is you know actually arguing about it doesn't make sense all of us are aware of the election malpractices that happened on the 25th of February 2023 in the name of presidential election. There were ballot box gnashing, there were intimidation, they were voting according to your place of origin. You cannot vote here, you should go back home and vote. There are many things that transpired which it actually triggered the minds of the people who rallied about this young man called Obi, which they saw that he is a young and, you know, young, hearty and, you know, healthy man that they saw that deserve to have handled the problem of Nigeria. Even though I will not enter, you know, I will not actually go towards this direction that they thought wrong. I will not say they thought wrong because in your own philosophy is your best. It must overshadow or over, you know, override every other person's. That is exactly the way it is. So they believed in Obi. The whole young people in Nigeria with their right senses, or will I say, I will not say with their right senses, I will say that the whole young people in Nigeria that actually clamoring for change. They believe that Obi, Obi will give it to them. But all of a sudden, Tantara, um, they selected Tinubu and gave you a man who have a reserved hospital bed in Europe for medical uh, travels. He has a reserved hospital bed for him. 
You know the, the way people reserve suites in the hotels. He has a reserve hospital bed because of his medical condition. And upon that we are actually uncertain, you Nigerians, one Nigerians, not we, you one Nigerians are uncertain as per who is the man that is in Asorok that is calling himself your president. The argument has surfaced where people say or where we told you that the man in Asorok is not the president Buhari you voted in 2015 because the president Buhari you voted in 2015 was a very sickly man just like the one they have selected this time around he was a very very sickly man whom can oh you know who was always in a hospital bed from britain to saudi arabia from britain to saudi arabia until he died and they decided to wear somebody a mask and present them to you in the name of your president you agree with them African Union who stood up to observe minute silence for the President Buhari that died. Agree with them. All of a sudden, he reappeared. And we saw where the picture and everything where he was declared brain dead. We saw it. Because he was not a strong man when he occupied that position of leadership the pressure in that position of leadership can actually cause you to have you know for your health condition to, to deteriorate talk more of a person whom health condition is already you know deteriorated so now you as wallow showing having seen that nigeria all these people at your age you have watched Nigeria lies sell everywhere. You have watched Nigeria atrocities being covered. You have watched Nigeria, you know, intimidation, police brutality, all these things being covered. You have watched ambassadors and envoys coming from different countries in Ni to Nigeria being bribed in order for them not to actually bring out the data that is coming out of Nigeria. You have watched all that. And the only thing that became your concern was that part of obedient movement is actually showing their grievances for the election malpractices which every one of us saw, witnessed, and observed. We saw it we witnessed it, you know, we, it is not, it is just like, um, it was just like a movie. Even younger generation, people that was, you know, that had never witnessed election, they observe it because they saw social media, they saw televisions, they saw everything. Now they have woken up to this, their consciousness, knowing that Nigeria is election rigger what they will grow up to understand that this is a rigging election rigging nation because that is what they have been introduced to so i don't think they are going to if this generation that is bringing them up does not rally to stop this and bring about the disintegration of nigeria i don't think these children will be able to fight tomorrow against all these atrocities because they woke up seeing it it will become a norm to them. They will learn how to live with it. So, Walosho Winka, haven't you, have you, you know, having seen the condition and the situation of Nigeria in the last one, you know, in the last decade, you still believe that a sickly old man who happens to be from your clan, who happens to be your brother, is worthy to preside over 200 and something million people in an environment that you know that knows no peace you were there 
you know about Nigeria amalgamation. It is true that you are celebrated across the world. And uh, the reason why you are celebrated across the world, it is because of your renowned English speaking and literature writing. That is exactly the reason why you are celebrated around the world. Because, of course, if in my own opinion, all these things that you have actually acquired, the fame and the respect that you have acquired over the years, I don't think it has ever, you know, actually helped Nigeria to thrive. Maybe it, it helped you and your family, you know, to thrive. But it has never helped any Nigeria. Your opinion has never helped Nigerians. Maybe it helped your family. So, in your old age, at the age of 80-something, we are you supposed to be on the side that will help your children, your up, you know, your your grandchildren that are waking up to see this type of Nigeria today? Where are you supposed to be fighting for a better future for them? You decide to destroy, or you decide to be in support of the destruction of the future which you are not going to be part of. For them, I don't think you like them a lot. I don't think you, you, you actually like those children. Now, I want to also bring it to the way people are actually responding to you. Reminding you of your past mistakes. Reminding you of what you have introduced to Nigeria that have taken the life of 1.8 million youth. And upon that, you are saying, I know that you are one Nigerianist. You, be you belong to one Nigeria and you are championing and promoting everything one Nigeria. But now, don't you, you have never thought of having that one Nigeria to favor young people? No. You don't want it to favor young people. Why? Even with your intellectualism, you don't want one Nigeria to favor young people. Knowing that the young people that you people continue to tell us when we were growing up, that you are the future leader of tomorrow. Or you are the, or the leader of tomorrow in the Nigeria. We used to adore all these words. When we hear it at school, in that zoological republic called Nigeria, we used to listen to them. We used to adore them. We used to actually study hard in order to make it to that top, to be the leader of this Nigeria. Back then... Until we came to find out that there is no future in this Nigeria. That everything that you older people were telling us has been a lie. A Nigeria where you say your diversity is your strength, yet people are being reminded of where they come from. People are being, you know, intimidated when it comes to voting. Telling them that they don't belong here. They should go back to their land and do their voting. And I'm loving this, all these things that is coming up because it is now going to now make, it is going to bring the mind of all these people who never believed, who never believed in what we are fighting for. It will bring their mind to it, to understand and know that Nigeria is not going to change. That the more we are actually nurturing and pushing for one Nigeria, the more Nigeria is getting rotten to the core. And the more these old people that are there, as long as you have given them something that they will use and live for today, they don't think about tomorrow. Because they know that it will not take long, they will 
you know, join their ancestor. It doesn't concern them anymore. What I called such is selfishness of our parents that does not actually think about the future of us, the children. That's exactly what you see in Nigeria. I don't want to, you know, actually go hard on you, Wale Shawinka, because I have um, a lot of respect for you. But in a situation whereby you and, uh, you know, you supporting Tinubu, having seen that he is medically unfit to even context for political position in Nigeria. Talk more of first citizen of Nigeria. And you supported it as an intellectual, you know, that you are. A man who is respected, highly respected, not just respected, highly respected. And you are in support of that. You know, I am very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. The reason why I am very, very disappointed is you have seen the agitation. Even your people were agitating. And the reason why I am not going so hard on you, it is because maybe in your own mind, because you believe that Tinubu will give you people in Yoruba land as Yorubas a fair share of this cake from Nigeria. You believe that he will represent you people. I, I, uh, that is actually the reason why I am not going hard on you. But you believing that Tinubu will represent your cause and the cause of the Yoruba land. That is the reason why you stood up to, to, to support him. Then have you believing in that? I don't have a problem. I support you because you are supporting what you feel that is right for your own people. That is the reason why I do not have a problem with that. But in a situation whereby the last time I check, you are still one Nigerianist. Why do you only look for what is going to be beneficial to your own people only? And not what is going to be beneficial to this one Nigeria that you are clamoring for. Have you now seen that you people are not practicing what you guys preach? Have you now seen how you people, how cunning you people have become? How selfish you people have become? In your quest to get a better deal, you drag other nations, other people who are not, you know, accepted, who are not seen as part of Nigeria, you are dragging them into this one Nigeria mess. Yet you are looking for a better deal only for you and your own people. Have you now seen the reason why people are giving you all this backlash? Because they don't expect this from you. Had it been you have stood up in the past, you know, half a decade, saying that the amalgamation of Nigeria is not something that, must, that is recommendable. Or reminding us, the, you know, the history of the governor of protectorate, on how they handle the issue of Nigeria in the past, in the past hundred years, you know, the last hundred years. You did not do so. You were clamoring for one Nigeria. You were clamoring for a better Nigeria. So, I ask you, Walosha Winka, a well-renowned and a celebrated man across the world. I ask you, so the only reason why you see that Nigeria must be, remain one, it is for you to support the election practices that took place. 
on the 25th of Se uh, February 2023, which led to the selection of your own clan, your brother, Tinubu, to be the president of Nigeria. Having seen that this man is not healthy, having seen that this man selected Muslim Muslim ticket, having seen that you are preaching one Nigeria or new Nigeria that will help people in it to thrive. So having seen all that, it means that you went back to look for what is better and fair, you know, better deal for only Yoruba people because that is the reason why you are in support of Tinubu. Because I don't think if it was not, if he was not a Yoruba man, I don't think you will do what you, you did today. To the extent that you are seeing your own people intimidating the people who have built almost, who have developed Lagos. The Biafran people, which you've been preaching one Nigeria, one good Nigeria, one better Nigeria, one united Nigeria. You have been preaching it over the years. You have been saying, being a political activist in the last decade, speaking about what will help this one Nigeria to thrive. You have never for one day talked about the dissolution of this contraption called Nigeria that is been uh, you know bringing bloodbath to the people who live in it you have never for one day talked about the dissolution of this nigeria you have never for one day talked about the disintegration of this nigeria which was not created by you or your ancestor by you or anybody that you know but it was created by somebody from Europe, who came and bring these people, you, 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 from today henceforth, you are called Nigeria, which was a name given to a British company called Royal Niger Company, Royal Niger Company. You accepted it, yet you are a well-renowned, you know, writer. A well-known man that is celebrated across the world in intellect. You have never argued why a country that is going to be the well, you know, that is going to, you know, harbor black people, a white man from Europe, and the girlfriend, Flora Shaw, came and they say. This is how you live from today henceforth. You didn't even you did not even think about let's change the name of this Nigeria to see if things were going to be better for one day until it gets to this extent. You didn't. All you continue to you know imply is something that will make Nigeria to be great. So I ask you again: is a man who have um already hospital bed in Europe going to give you that better deal for the whole nation or is he going to give it to you as you and Yoruba people so there is something I see there selfishness selfishness <laughs> Because if a man like you will wake up and say that Nigeria unity is in a limbo and Nigeria disintegration is a task that is due. I believe if you people did not listen to you if you made those comments and it come to this extent or youth that are clamoring for better deal that you, you as a man that is well respected said such things in the past years or talk about restru you know talk about not restructuring talk about total disintegration of this 
Flora Shaw and Lord Lugard's initiative called Nigeria. Had it been you have been vocal talking about that in the past years and this youth did not take action, this youth did not listen to you, regardless of their ethnicity or their religious affiliation, but you have never done so. So why on earth are you looking for a better deal or, you, or are you supporting what you see as a potential better deal for Yoruba nation and not for the whole of this Nigeria that you want them to be together? Selfishness. Very, very selfish. That is what I see here. Because Tinubu is a Yoruba man. He has promised you people a better deal in the Yoruba land. And upon that, you are ostracizing the Igbos. You are victimizing the Igbos. You are victimizing them because they have made a lot of success. They have actually achieved a lot. They have built many things. They bought land where is a swamp and they cover it and they build mansion on top of these swamps. So it is now time to victimize them to see if you will take over their properties. And yet you preach one Nigeria. So which one Nigeria is Tinubu going to preside over? If you finish victimizing the Igbos, you will embrace the fallen, right? Then you become the one Nigeria that you are championing or promoting. Have you now seen the reason why you are receiving such backlash? Because your judgment is self-centered your judgment and your philosophy of late is self-centered is selfish so let me actually try to leave it here because there are many things so upon this upon this People say that they are calling for a debate. Somebody like Eberima in Finland, whom we know that he is APC affiliated, but in denial of it. He made a post calling on you for a debate. Now, the question I am asking him the debate you are calling on is it actually to reignite your media attention because you they, it is always whenever they feel like um, you are dying off in the media you know there will there will be somebody from Yoruba land who will come into your platform because it will people might uh, see it as a just a statement may just like others did and then you will you know feel it is just ordinary statement but now without you knowing it is he is actually planning to reignite or bring back those people who are actually who has been fooled or who is being fooled by him in the name that he is trying to give them biafra or he is fighting for biafra on their behalf that he is going on a debate with showinka now what are you going to debate with showinka about are you going to debate about him supporting his own man because he's from Yoruba land? Or are you going to debate with Showinka the reason why you were calling for election boycott in Biafra land? 
Or are you going to debate with Showinka representing Obi? Because the, the, the problem that the, the issue with Showinka on the current media space right now, it is about him, Obi, and the Tinubu. So when you are calling for debate, <laughs> in Finland, does you mean that you are going to defend Obi in your debate? And tell them that Tinubu is not the right candidate, but Obi is. Is it what you are going to do in your debate? Because what this guy was talking about, everything that he represents in this concurrent, you know, media backlash, he's getting. It is about him supporting the election malpractice because it is going to favor the Yoruba race. So it is a political debate. Are you going to engage in, in political debate? So I don't actually know the reason why Wale Showinka must come for a debate. I don't really know why Wale Showinka must come for a debate. Somebody is asking me, why are you wearing a glasses at night? You are a musician. <laughs> are you a musician? Mad people everywhere. His name is Luke. Luke Praise. Let me tell you the reason why I am wearing a, a, a glasses at night. Number one thing is that you don't know my time zone. That is number one thing. Um, I will pardon you for that. You are ignorant there. You don't know my time zone. You don't know what time is it where I am. Now, having a, let me just answer you. Um, because I need to teach you as well. You are here to learn. The reason why I am wearing a glasses. Of course, you can see it is not just it is not just ordinary glasses. You can see it is it is a good glasses. It is not just ordinary glasses. These glasses prevent blue light into my eyes. It prevents blue light. You know, from the screen that I am looking into while educating you. And from the light that is right in front of me, I don't want it to affect my eyesight. So I am trying to minimize as much blue light as I can in order for me not to have eye issues when I am growing old. Because I am educating somebody like you who is very, very ignorant and uh, you bring or brought your ignorance to the media space. So, have I answered your question? That's exactly the reason why you find me wearing glasses. My, I don't have a very sharp eyesight. So, I am wearing this in order to prevent some damages. And I don't wear cheap glasses. That is the reason why you, you will not see me wearing cheap glasses. I have to protect my eye lens. So, that is by the way. Of course, if you, if you look at this, if you look at this, this thing you see is an eye drop. This eye drop, it resets your eye lens. When you put this in your eyes, it resets your eye lens. You will not see anything in the next 12 hours. You can only see very far. You will not see close in the next 12 hours. But it will enable you to actually sleep after being in front of the light the whole, you know, for a very long time. So that is exactly the reason why I am wearing glasses. So don't say whether I am a musician because you are ignorant. You didn't care to find out. You should have called me or sent me a message and ask me, why do you always wear glasses? But that is, by the way, I believe that I have tackled your own problem because my glasses is your problem in this broadcast. Not the, the, you know, the education that I am giving you. Now, so let us um, not lose uh, focus. Let us move forward. So, in, this, in all these things that you have seen, what will be the debate? What is the debate going to do for you in Biafra struggle? Or what is going to, you know, what is the debate going to, you know, help you achieve? 
by telling Walosho Winka that it is the time to divide Nigeria. Having been in Nigeria, what have, you know, Walesho Winka's, you know, contribution got to do, especially in this time when he is affiliated to a, with APC and his brother who has been selected into the office of leadership, what are you going to have a debate with him for? Are you now into the politics of Nigeria or are you not supposed to be fighting for the freedom you claim that you are fighting for the people of Biafra? Why are you uh, trying to bring Walosho Winka? And some people who are very, very, you know, who does not understand or read the handwriting on the wall, they will see it as a new development. Eventually, if Walosho Winka comes into your platform, because we have made peace with it that some Yorubas that are APC affiliated, just like you, Eberima, you always, they always come to give you support in desecrating Biafra land. I remember during the time of election campaign, you claim no election and they claim no election. And at the end of the day, their own person now win the election. They never boycotted any election as per agree between you and them. They never agree, ever, ever mentioned it again or acted upon it. But you continue to shout, no election in Biafra and this and that. Because now they have initiated you. And I told you, Biafrans, that this is how Yoruba people use Igbo people. Because they always see Igbo people as fools. They will always use you. You will think that you are as na wansane a law course on Aramman. You think that you are doing something great. That is the reason why. They are using you. You think you are wise, but you are foolish. That is the reason why they are using you. Now you are calling them to come on interview. In on interview, will they say no? Well, also we haven't seen how you know intelligent he is, especially in his vocabulary. Of course, vocabulary does not take anybody anywhere. Anyway, um, but you bringing him, you so-called claiming to be a lawyer, claiming to be this, you are not, um, you don't speak eloquently, you might not even be able to uncover some vocabulary that is going to use against you in your so-called debate. I don't think you will be able to stand it having seen the type of society that Nigeria believe in, society that speaks English. And eloquently. I don't think there is anything that will come out of you and the Walosho Winka that will help the, th the struggle to thrive. So you are only going to where the light is, where the rim light is. You are not here to fight for freedom. That's what I can assure you. That's exactly what I can assure you. If you will remember the time our sister professor um what was what um on professor there was a professor that made you know his uh, her tribute to queen will i say tribute or her i will say tribute that he wrote to queen whether good or bad it is tribute um that she wrote to queen she is a professor what was her name? Somebody remind me of this uh, this young lady from the from USA that um, on Twitter even Twitter bound, banned her for making some statement about the genocide committed on Biafrans. Um, Anya Uju Anya, yes, Professor Uju Anya was the name of the lady why did you not write for you to have a debate or bring her for an interview to support what we are doing if you are a biafra freedom fighter you didn't do that 
The only thing you are doing, you want to bring Wale Sowinka, who is now involving himself with politics, affiliated with APC, supporting presidential president select, is the man you want to bring to your platform while you claim you are fighting for freedom for Biafra. What is he going to do for you <laughs> in your platform? So these are the things that people who are on in, who are not intelligent, when they see you, they will start promoting it. Ah, and you will you will ask him question. You will do this. You will do that. Without, I believe that everything we come online to do must be something that is productive, that is going to be be beneficial to the struggle we are into. Not to be, we are not. If we want to start doing it, let us try to be in the rim light. You will find many things that we need to bring up because there are many things we have done. We have not, br we don't bring into the social media just because it is not the light we are looking for. We are looking for our freedom. It is not about what we are going to people to know us and know that we um uh, we will be well known to the world without having any good legacy towards what you do or towards what you claim that you represent so what are you fighting for what are you fighting for showing cast statement was a political statement Partisan political statement. That was what he made. He did not make any statement that concerns what we are doing. He is promoting his own people. Go there and promote your own people. But you cannot. Rather you are promoting them and everything they represent. Because they sent you abroad to go and play sport. They sent you. I wouldn't be surprised if you were eventually showing car appear in your platform. I wouldn't be surprised because the game continues. The games that you and some Yoruba people are playing with us continues. We are seeing it and we have, you know, we are we know exactly what it, it is. So I don't think that you will manipulate a lot of people for the sake of that you will not manipulate a lot of people for the sake of that now let us go to another thing i want you to remember that our sister which you see here okay sorry not this not this where is this our sister here oh no which is what well, her name is chimu amanda chimu amanda ngozi adichie she is a renowned writer based in united states of course you know she wrote a letter open letter for that matter to the mr president of united states let me see if i will read such letter that she wrote i am going to read it from the newspaper in atlanta now i want you to let us read the, the letter that she wrote to mr president before we go to the backlash is also getting and we are going to address it and we are now going to now advise our sister where she need to channel her energy now let us go there let us go there because now the what is going on here now is in kemon kemon azonafia our our people need to understand that it is all about your own now in that zoological republic you need to promote and protect your own because nigeria is divided i don't know if you are still waiting for nigeria to be divided more than this you are still you are actually making a big mistake 
Nigeria is more divided than ever before. Now let us bring uh, the the letter she wrote and let us read it. I am going to read it. I don't know if you will be able to see it. Let me zoom it a bit so that you will be able to see it. I am going to read it from the Atlantic from the Atlantic so that you will see it better because the the letter is you know is there now for the atlantic chima amanda adichie write open letter to president biden about nigeria's hollow democracy Today, The Atlantic is publishing an open letter to President Joe Biden from the acclaimed Nigeria writer Chimamanda Adichie. In the letter, Nigeria Hollow Democracy. Adichie confronts the question of why Americans keep congratulating the winner of Nigeria's disastrous election in February. Following the passage of 2022 Electoral Act in Nigeria, which gave legal backing to the vote counting process, something, just one moment, vote counting process, something remarkable happened on the morning of 20, uh, of the morning of February 25th. The day of the Nigeria presidential election, Adichie writes, Many Nigerians went out to vote holding in their hearts a new sense of trust. Cautious trust, but still trust. What followed was a breach of that trust when on February 26, social media became flooded with evidence of voting irregularities. Number crossed out and the rewrite rewritten some originally written in black ink and bad and had been rewritten in blue. Some some blundering uh, some blunderingly whited out with tipex. The election had been the election had been not only rigged but done in such a, a shady, a shady shabby manner that it insulted the intelligence of Nigerians. It insulted the intelligence of Nigerians. And that is exactly, this is the path that all of you who call yourself intellectuals in Nigeria, of course, what happened on the 25th of February insulted the intelligence of Nigerians well well written well written now we continue the ruling party's candidate bola tinubu was eventually announced as the pres president elect of nigeria rage is brew is brewing adichie writes especially among young people the dis the discontent the despair the tension in the air have not been this palpable in years. Adichie questioned the U.S. State Department response in congratulating Tunubu and accepting the election result. American intelligence surely cannot be so inept. A little homework and they would know what is manifestly obvious to me and so many others. The process was imp imperiled not by technical shortcomings but by the de deliberate manipulations to Biden, Adichie writes. You have spoken of the importance of a global community for democracy and the need to stand up for justice and the rule of law. A, go a global community for democracy cannot thrive in the face of apathy from its most 
from its most powerful member. Why would the United States prioritizes the rule of law and thus a president elect who has emerged from an unlawful process? Aditya concludes congratulating the elections, elections outcome, President Biden tarnish American self-proclaimed commitment to democracy. Please do not give the sheen of legitimacy to an illegitimate process. The United States should be what it says it is. Chima Amanda Adichie full letter. Okay. Nigeria Holo. Nigeria Holo Democracy is online today at Atlantic.com. All right. So this is, this was what she wrote to President Biden because, uh, of course, we know that some Americans who are also going to benefit from this um, Tinubu um, selected uh, leader, they have congratulated him, even knowing that the evidence is out there in the open that the election process was manipulated was not free and fair was rigged um regardless of what this agent they had in as a british envoy which is always which is the, always the one manipulating every data coming out from nigeria to the international community and also the united states ambassador that has been there as well they were bribed they were actually manipulating every result or data that is coming out from nigeria before sending it out there to the international bodies so if you know most of the time when we see such data or people congratulating some people it is you know these people they didn't do their due diligence they just woke up and received the data from british envoy from america um u.s um, mission to nigeria and they say that the election was conducted free and fair because they have been given money to report what they are reporting. So, uh, my dear sister Chima Amanda Adichie, you have re you have written. Of course, you are known for writing, and you are known for making a lot of sense, and you are also known for coming in in a very important context so the reason why i picked up to talk about the letter you wrote to president biden is about you being there all this while my sister you have been there all this while we have been agitating we have been grappling with you know extrajudicial killing We've been grappling with marginalization. We've been grappling with all sort of inhuman treatment upon that they release Fulani terrorists to come into our land to start killing and raping our women. You've been there, my sister. You didn't actually reflect on that. Why? And they haven't seen how much you love Nigeria to be one and how much you have promoted one Nigeria. This one shook you to your bone marrow that you have to actually react. And uh, I am very, very happy that you have, you have woken up to the reality of Nigeria and what it is for real. Because everything and anything you do to pr promote oneness of Nigeria, it is no longer going to be ignorant. It is going to be foolishness. Because I love what you have written to the Joe Biden administration, which shows that Nigeria does not practice democracy. They don't respect democratic process. The fact that they have... Um, a liar who comes to the media, liar Mohammed, 
to come and say everything went well. The same liar Mohammed came to say that there was nobody killed in Lekki Tolgate, which the evidence was there. So, my sister Chima Amanda Adichie, I actually named my daughter, my second daughter, after you. But I didn't think about you before naming her, but I, I, I named her Chima Amanda. That's my, the name of my little daughter. So, I love that so I love that name so much. So um ever since um I discover you on the media space, I've been following your work, I've been following your you know your intellectualism, I've been following everything that you are doing, how you are adored and celebrated across the nations of on earth by your fellow women. I believe you promote feminism and all that so but that is not what we are here to talk about we are here to talk about how we are going to get away from this circle called one nigeria that you have finally discovered that there is nothing that comes out of it that is going to be authentic the election that took place this few months ago it was a sham which you wrote against it so now you have discovered what nigeria really is what are you going to do about it are you still going to use your voice trying to promote what we bring nigeria to be one nation or are you going to use your voice trying to support your people right now in order to achieve and you know restore the our dignity because we are, are being isolated. We are being killed. Police brutality everywhere. It is high time you start supporting your people the same way you have supported Nigeria right now by writing to Joe Biden, of which I know that Joe Biden might not react upon your letter to them. If, he, if the activities of this current situation or the, the, if the current situation in Nigeria right now is a good business for them, your letter is nullified on arrival. And they will call it a foreign policy. They will target it is a foreign policy. We cannot intervene in that manner. We cannot do this. You know, they will bring it towards that dimension that you yourself will not have much to say or do. But now that you have realized that everything about Nigeria is a lie, everything about the people preaching one Nigeria, it is a lie. It is for them to get a fair share for themselves, to build a generational wealth. Because it has become a survival of the fittest in Nigeria. So, if it is for survival of the fetus, when are you going to bring your beautiful children back to Nigeria and make them live without fear of being prejudiced for, their, for the sake of their religious affiliation or being prejudiced for the sake of their cultural you know, value system or for the sake of whom they are? Do you see, feel the sense of belonging having seen the 25th February election and the gubernatorial election that took place? What transpired? Do you still see yourself as part of One Nigeria that you are writing for the sake of One Nigeria because your letter signifies your support for One Nigeria? I want everyone who is watching me, if you are watching me on Twitter, we are live on Twitter. I want you to tag Chima Amanda Adichie, Chimo Amanda Adichie, while you are sharing this video or you are retweeting the video on Twitter because I want this message to get to her. I want this message to get to her. Let me find out her Twitter handle. Um, let me find out her Twitter and handle.
Just one moment. Let me bring to you her Twitter handle so that when you are sharing, you tag her. Okay. Her Twitter handle is Achim Amanda Real. Achim Amanda Real. Achim Amanda. The, the, the spelling is C H I M A M A N D A. Then Real. R E A L. The Real, the first letter is capital letter. Chima Amanda is capital letter. I don't know if it matters. So um let's let's find it before we proceed. Achima Amanda Rail. So when you are retweeting the video, you tag her Achima Amanda Chimo. Yes. Or you search uh, Chima Amanda Ngozi Adichie, then you will be able to see the Twitter handle, her Twitter handle. So that is you tag her. When you are watching, you tag her, let her. She need to actually come to the party. Because she has experienced one Nigeria that she has been in denial that it existed. That is the reason why she never... I know that she has been writing and uh, actually... You know, questioning the colonial activities in Africa at large. She has been, you know, vocal about the neo-colonialist, the, the neo-colonialism, the imperialism. And then it is now for her to bring it home. Because as in Akulukwa no na Malonye Baya. It is now for Chima Amanda to bring all this, her initiative and her wisdom, bring it home in order to help her own people. Because I can categorically show you right now the backlash she is getting for writing a letter to Mr. President of United States. Because, number one, the reason why she's getting that backlash because she is Igbo woman. I am going to show you. And number two, the reason why she is getting such backlash is because she is a Biafra. And anybody that is seen as a Biafra, no matter how much they claim they are celebrating you, it is fake. It is a fake celebration. They are not celebrating you for real. It is just, you know, you are just being celebrated for the sake of being celebrated. That is the reason why some political bigots insulted you for the sake of writing a letter against an evil election malpractice to which took place in Nigeria. Not only that evil election malpractice, the victimization of your own people. You did not add it. Uh, okay, I think I saw it. You made a conclusive, you know, submission on that. I saw it when you thought uh, you talked about people being just told that you you don't belong here. You cannot vote here. Go to your place to vote. Something like that. So I I I, I saw the reflection of that. So I believe that this this lesson that you have learned will now teach you that. Biafra is our only hope. If you bring your voice, I know that anybody who start preaching freedom of Biafra, they might, you know, I believe that you might be scared of losing some followers you have across Nigeria. Let it be. The future of those your children, beautiful children that you have, the future of them is in a limbo. As long as Nigeria still exists. 
The reason why I am telling you that is that I am going to remind you of Abuja Declaration 1989. That is the reason why I am actually telling you that the future of your beautiful children that you are raising, hoping that one day they will come back home if they are domiciled in the United States because they are citizens of the United States, that one day they will return home and bring something good if home exist in a good you know faith but do you think that you will bring them to nigeria do you really think that something good will ever come out of nigeria i don't think so if you believe that something good is going to come out of nigeria you know i want you to come out of it because there is nothing good that is going to come out of nigeria nothing good is going to come out of nigeria because nigeria is a place where they practice federal system of government. Nigeria is a place where they practice fascism. That is exactly what you see in Nigeria. And you can only get it right to safeguard the future of this your children that you have. For the sake of the future, you can only get it right if we achieve our dignity back in the land that God in heaven has given to us to occupy and to do exploit in it. That a white man from Europe, that we don't even know what he looks like, and his girlfriend, Flora Shaw, came and they decided to desecrate this land by taking this land, having, by bringing this land, the authority of our land, and giving it to somebody who call you an infidel. What do you think that these people who see you as an infidel is going to do for the benefit of you and your children? What are they going to do for your benefit? Absolutely nothing. So I want you people who are very, you know, well-renowned, you know, personalities in the work that you do, in, the, in, the, in, your, in your, you've written so many books, you have represented Africa, you have, you know, been vocal about the oppression of Africa continent. You have been vocal about the oppression of black people, black children. How we are seen as, a, you know, another creature coming out from a bush, which is called Africa. I've, I've followed so many of your, your, your work. They are, you know, I give thumbs up to them. But not with feminism. Um, we sideline that one. But at the end of it all, it is now time to do your due diligence back home. Because the only reason why our people are being oppressed and victimized in Lagos is because so many of them they did not bring some of their, you know, some of their achievement back home. They made Lagos their place and they invested everything that they have worked for in Lagos. And that is the reason why today they allow themselves to be made, you know, they, they allow themselves to be treated like nothing in Lagos today. Because they didn't remember home when they're supposed to remember home. Even a wise adage in Igbo land said, when the world gets to, you know, get home, then you will understand. You will now know who the world belongs to, who made the wealth. So, including you, whatever you are doing, we know that United States is a beautiful place. It is a beautiful place which was built by people. It is time for you, among other people, who have the knowledge of what will help our own nation to thrive. 
to come into this party. Let us drive this narrative of getting our sovereign nation of Biafra and making sure that we build a better future for the sake of these children that we have given birth to. We hold, you know, we owe them that responsibility of creating and shaping a better future for them. It is not only sending them to Harvard University or you sending them to Cambridge. It is not about that. Whether you send them to the best university of the world, at the end of the day, if they do not know or know how to you know, come home to identify whom they are, believe you me, you have never done them any good. As a person who promotes African um, emancipation or decolonization, you, Chimamanda Adichie, a woman I respect so much, it is now time for you to come closer to home. And your home is Biafra. That is our final destination. Where we are going to be respected. Where we are going to actually be appreciated. Where we are going to be equal in the eyes of the law. Where we are going to be treated like human. Where your children are going to you know, be a leader if they qualify to be. Where they are not going to be prejudiced because of anything. It is in Biafra land. And the earlier you support this movement, the better for you. And likewise, all other people who are affiliated to obedient movement today, believing that something good is going to come out of it, we told you from the beginning that they will never give it to you. But we will not be the reason why they will not. That is the reason why we made sure that all these people who have taken money calling for election boycott in Biafra land, we made sure that we nullify every thing that they have put in place. We make sure that we sideline every authority that they have brought up there to tackle the election or to make sure that they boycott the election in Biafra land. We made sure that we remove it so that those who believe in one Nigeria will see it for themselves. And if you are still there believing that something magical will happen and the Tinubu will not be the president, when the DSS is now bringing up a news, DSS become media spokesperson who brings up a news to the public instead of the... Of course, we know that the job of the DSS it is to actually work as an intelligent. The job of the DSS is to work as an intelligent of Nigeria federal government. But in a situation whereby the DSS is now, is no only work, is not working as an intelligent, they are now choosing sides in the Nigeria politics. What does that tell you? Let me actually remind us the job of the DSS before you will be, before you will now see the the if, you know the media statement they made few days ago that there will be an interim government which led to the killing of our peaceful protesters in Aba because the dss made such statement and in order to clamp down every human rights activities in nigeria that is the reason why they made that statement because they are now they are pro, they are been promoting they are promoting the, the ruling party they are affiliated to the ruling party listen to the the dss letters report is a clue to get our voices heard on okay this is this was um an article i wrote about it but not i don't want to actually it is not what I am looking for. Let me bring us to the job of the DSS. Just one moment.
If Facebook kick you out, bring yourself back up. If they kick you out, bring yourself back up. Because they play this game a lot. One moment. I don't want this to take uh, much of my time, actually. I don't want it to take much of my time. I cannot find that. Um... Okay, let me bring it to you of course dss for those of you who does not know dss um when we talk about dss the dss is just an acronym acronym and it stands for the department of state service in nigeria so the, this this is security agencies this agency is responsible for providing intelligence gathering and security services to the federal government of Nigeria, as well as protecting the top government officials and safeguarding the nation's critical infrastructure. The DSS also carries out investigation of criminal activities that threatens the national security and works in conjunction with other security agencies to maintain peace and the order throughout the country now the latest report of the dss claiming that there is some people who are plotting to make sure that there will be no inauguration of the president select come the dates that they have put you know put it there you know you ask yourself why is the dss saying this to the public Instead of taking it through the appropriate channel and saying it to the public without an evidence, is it protecting? I ask you a question. Is it protecting Nigeria or is it protecting the whole country of Nigeria? Is it not about? This is a sentiment with no basis. A sentiment that has no basis that the DSS brought out in order to use it to kill anybody who will rise up to actually exercise their freedom of expression. Have you now seen the reason why they went swiftly to go and kill the members of you know the public who were protesting? For the release of Mazen Nam the Kano. Many people that were killed in that protest, all of them were not IPOB members. Those were the people who love what Mazen Nam the Kano was doing. They decided that they have to join a protest. Those were some people who even saw the protest going on and they joined. They were killed in that process. Because they have to kill anybody who wants to protest against the current situation of Nigeria. So that it does not stop you, stop them from carrying out their evil plan of the selection they did in the 21st of February. By plotting and uh, trying to bring to effect. The Abuja Declaration, 1989. Which is where we are going. Have you now seen, my sister Chima Amanda, that there is nobody that is representing you in Nigeria? You stand for yourself. Survival of the fittest. And it is time for us to actually move away from this structure, move away from this contraption called Nigeria. 
It is British contraption, British enclave called Nigeria. It is time for us to separate ourselves from it, for us to have economic growth and stability, for us to have freedom of expression, freedom of, uh, of speech, freedom of um, religion, freedom of uh, uh, you know anything that we want to be affiliated to. For us to have such freedom, we must, we must separate ourselves from these people. They don't love us. And we have discovered that they don't love us. We have been loving them, making sure that this relationship stands. But we have paid with our blood for the sake of this relationship to stand. The oil that Nigeria is bragging about in the whole world, we own it. Have you forgotten? We own this oil. Biafrans own this oil. Yet, we have been marginalized. All those of you who are championing P2B, p The fact that they have stopped you from protesting. It is now high time for you to look for what is making Nigeria happy. You need to bring economic sabotage to Nigeria. Because they have brought sabotage towards your freedom. They have brought sabotage towards your demo, you know, democratic um, exercise. They have actually, they are trying to quench everything that will make the world hear your cry. They are trying to make sure that it does not happen. So it is up to you to brainstorm, to know the next plan. Because I see change now, they change the um, the drum beat in a change in Egu, then the dancing step ought to be changing. When the drum beat is changing, the dancing step is supposed to be changing with it. They have made sure that you don't come out to exercise your freedom of expression through protest, peaceful gathering. They will shoot and kill you, not one. Not twice, not thrice, not fourth, not uh, you know, not fourth time. They made sure that each and every time they will tell tell you your IPOB, they shoot and kill you. So how then are you going to cry for the world to hear you? Because they have beaten you up. They have pre they are trying to prevent you not to cry. So are you going to allow that to happen? That means that. You are doomed. The children you are giving birth to, you are going to allow them to go through this same process all their lives. Or are you not going to go back home? All those people who are in abroad, believing that uh, um, you are in Europe, you are in Africa. You are in the USA, you are in Africa. You are in a, uh, you are in. Every other place. You are in South Africa. In Econafo. You are in uh, in Morocco. In Econafo. You are in Egypt. In Econafo. All these things. Do you think you are going to live there for good? Remember, Nigeria is Bolongkegi. Can swear anybody? Nigeria is Bolongkegi. Is now telling you, is telling you now. On a Anna was again now, pack out baggy. You don't belong here. You say Lagos is a no man's land. They are now telling you, victimizing you. Say, get pull up baggy, you know, poor over here. Nigerian keep all on go country again. Your green want green passport or your green passport. Where are you from? I am a Nigerian, a bona fide Nigerian. Nigeria know the carry last. Nigeria now is telling you now, pack and leave Lagos. If the Nigeria obona Nigeria amwe bolun kegi ge mego toa kedifi chelo nambo ofisi amwe inogasi ge megi oge na adiranya kefi chelo I continue to hear that um, there are countries that are xenophobic what is the meaning of xenophobic when a place where you come from they are being xenophobic against you or ibophobic against you then yet you will open your mouth one day and say south africa is xenophobic and uh, there is a xenophobic attack what are you going to call the one happening in your own place 
These same people that are victimizing you, they are at the same place. You know, there was a time there was a, you know, incidents that took place in South Africa. We saw all that. They say that uh, South Africa is xenophobic, that they are chasing foreigners. To the extent that Ali Onyama brought out a plane for people to go home. The Yoruba people went home through Ali Onyama's plane because of what they call xenophobic attack. Right? Igbo people went home through Ali Onyama's plane because of what they saw as xenophobic attack. Now, you are home right now. Some of you who even left, you know, the places where you were because you believe that they are being xenophobic against you. You went home. Little did you know that Yoruba people now will become xenophobic against you who is the owner of the country also, which they call one Nigeria. Your diversity is your strength. So what are you going to tell yourself? Everywhere you go, they will chase you until you restore your dignity. It has never happened to you. Don't take because it, it never reached me. Then you believe that it is going to be like that. It is not going to be like that. It will soon reach you because of the plan it was a long-term planning. Whichever bridge they get, they cross it without even fear or favor. Without even caring about what you think. That is the reason why I am calling all of you who see yourself to be intellectual. That is the reason why I am calling all of you who are Biafrans. But you have seen yourself in abroad and you believe that this abroad that you have seen yourself... That there is no, you know, and no matter what happens, you still, you, maybe you, you, you have made peace, I don't know, that you will live and die there. Because I have heard so many people who say they will live and die in abroad. Shame on to you. Shame on you. That means that you have lost the battle against those who took over your land. You are a coward. Anybody who will wake up and say that I will live and die, I don't want to go back home uh, to hell with the home in Africa, to hell with them, I will live and die where I am. To you know, you are a, you know, you are a disgrace to the to the motherland. You are a disgrace to motherland. You need to fight against that thing that is chasing you from your own place because that place where you want to live and die for people fought for it and people achieved that goal achieved that beautiful infrastructure service deliveries people fought for it it never fell from the sky and yet you are claiming you will live and die here and you are seeing yourself as an intelligent person you are a coward that's what you are I am not insulting you. I'm complimenting you because of your mind, quality of your mind. You cannot live and die there. You are not from there. You need to make sure that your children know where they come from. Because as in a mini donage do wankita. Mini donage do wankita. The water that is in that calabash is still there for the dog. Because at the end of the day, whether you live and die there, one day, one day, one, one, one time there will be a um, If I ask na afunafa that na, um, there is a spirit of your ancestor who was buried in America, or spirit of your ancestor who was um, any if any in London. The spirit is is thwarting. He want to come back home. You have caused a problem for your own children. They have to now go and look for where you are buried. To chenato bobogino. Have you now seen how selfish you are? By saying I will live and die there. Live and die in LA. Where somebody else built. Because what goes around will surely come around. If you believe, you know what you are. You are a black person. A dominant threat. The reason why black people are being 
you know, target all over the world because of our dominance. Our dominance, th- we have a dominant threat. That's why no matter which race you have child with, that child comes out to be more like you. It will never be more like that race because of our dominant threat. And that is the reason why when we go out of the sun, we make peace with it. When cold come, we make peace with it. We are, you know, we have this adaptation skin, the skin that adapts to any circumstances. But don't get used to your, you know, this your scary circumstance because you know you have found a way to navigate it. Because that has been the problem we are facing today. We always find a way to live with the problem that we can actually curb permanently. Let's make it right for the sake of our children. Let us make it right for the sake of our children. Now, let me show you the backlash Shima Amanda you got from this uh, political harlot. From this political harlot called Femi Fane Kayode. Um, another, another panga. What do you call him? Will I call him another, another panga? Or another, what, do, what uh, will I call him another Lai Mohammed? Another Lai Mohammed, a political harlot. Let me bring to you what he said so that um, you will understand the type of people you are dealing with. The type of ignorant you are dealing with. Selfish people. These are the people, they know what they are doing. They know exactly what they are doing. You will believe that these people, they are... They know what they are doing. These are one Nigerianist. He is a one Nigerianist. Let me show you. Before we... Okay, let me bring it to... So that we will compare this guy. What this guy has ever achieved in nigeria other than causing news constituting nuisance in the mainstream media that's only what he has achieved let me read it for you what he said about you now he said chima amanda's letter to biden is a pistol of garbage that is what they wrote in a media Hey, uh, uh, number one, Chima Amanda, you are, you are exposed, you are well-learned, you are intellectual, and you are in the media, even the mainstream media, most of the, you know, most of the time, you know where, how media authors, they write, you know, something that is going to come to the public domain. You know the types of words, characters that they don't use as a professional journalist, as a professional media company. You know the type of thing, because the, the reason why I am reflecting on all these things is to give you the reason why you will never, you know, these people will never match the standard of Biafrans. They will never match the standard of Biafrans. They will never match your standard because you are born special as a Biafran. It is actually a, it is, it is a blessing for you being a Biafra. For those of you who does not know it, it is a privilege being a Biafra. That's why you are, you know, they are doing what they are doing to you because they know if they leave you. They know where you will become. That is the reason why Nigeria with immoral Nigeria. Listen to what they wrote. In a, for, you know, for the public, including children, to assess and read. Look at what this man is saying. Tomorrow, these are the people who are going to govern Nigeria. By saying that Chima Amanda's letter to the Biden is a pistol of garbage. 
Now, not only that he, he said a pistol of garbage. Let's read further. Director of Special Media Project. <laughs> of course, he's going to be the next liar, Mohammed. Special Media Project and New Media. Tunubu Shetima Presidential Campaign Council. Femi Fanika Yode has described the open letter written by the Ni Nigeria writer Chima Amanda Adichie to President Joe Biden as an epistle of garbage that belongs to the bottom of, of public toilets. <laughs> these are, these are, you know what this is, uh, you know, you cannot write such article in a developed country. You will never, you will not write such, such rubbish in your article in a developed country, the way it is. But Zoom Media, Gotha Media. Recall that Adichie had published an open letter titled Nigeria's Holo Democracy. Why is America congratulating the winner of the you know disastrous election addressed to Biden on Thursday? The letter, among other things, stated that I hope stated that I hope President Biden that you do not personally share the cordial condescension you have spoken of the importance of a global community for democracy and the need to stand up for justice and rule of law reacting to the letter Femi Faneka Yode described Chima Amanda's Chima Amanda as an overrated <laughs> egocentric new age diva <laughs> oh have you now seen the reason why I brought this and the Walo Showinka did you see it Reacted to the letter, Femi Faneka Yode described Chima Amanda as an overrated and egocentric new age diva, saying the letter belongs to bottom of the toilet. Have you now seen the reason why how these people are so, you know, fake? Their love is fake. Their so-called call for unity is fake. Their one Nigeria call is fake. Everything about them is fake. That is the reason why he described your letter as a pistol of garbage that belongs to the public toilet because what is happening is in favor of him and his family. He does not care about other people from other tribes in Nigeria, yet they continue to clamor for one Nigeria. Have you now seen... This man that is calling you egocentric diva, he called you. He said that you are egocentric. Let me read it nice, nice um, correctly. Reacting to the letter, Femi Faneka Yode described Chima Amanda as overrated egocentric nude age diva. Overrated. Now let's see this man who is calling somebody overrated. Let us actually see if we can reflect on some of his work. Just one moment. Let's reflect on some of his um, contribution and how he is underrated. Because he believes he's underrated. That is the reason why he is saying that uh Sima Amanda is Igbo centric of course we have seen she married Igbo woman who gave him children I I wonder what this Igbo woman went in the hands of went through in the hands of this political harlot I want to bring to us what this man represents before we go to what they are plotting to do with our people and our children future in Nigeria that started in 1989 let me just one moment
Okay. Let me see if this is what I'm looking for. I want to bring it to you. I want to bring it to you. Let's see if it is what I'm looking for. Now, question is that what type of stupid question is that? Bankrolling who? I'm saying this on live TV. What? I'm saying this on live. I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this um, video that you are seeing here. Listen to this video where this man who is now believing that other people are overrated. The man who believes that other people are overrated for the sake of speaking the truth to power, for the sake of making sure that they are, you know, they, they doing what they believe is right to favor the public in this one Nigeria that they promote. That is the work of Chimamanda. Now, Listen to the man and the, the, the people who are going to rule you in this era of Nigeria. People who are not accountable for anything. They are not accountable for anything. I want you to hear this video where this man who is always in the present in the media looking for who to fight with, looking for who to criticize. Anybody that does not agree with him, he will come and insult that person and call them names. I want you to see the legacy of this man. The legacy of this man. Listen to it. Very attentively. Listen to it. And before we proceed... Facebook, I don't have the, I do not have um, the copyright on this program. YouTube, allow me, I do not own the copyright of this video I'm about to play right now. I do not own the copyright. I'm not doing it for commercial purpose, but I am doing it for a record purpose. So, listen to it and listen attentively. TV. What? No, put, put that thing now. Let me address. What type of stupid question is that? Mm -hmm. Listen to the question. Listen to the question. A media brought him up to actually ask him question as per all the travelings and all the extravagant um, expenditure that he is doing, which is seen as a wasteful expenditure. Who is bankrolling you on those expenditures that you are making? when you were in the government space now he blew out hot he blew very hot and he started throwing insult to the you know media journalist to the journalist and even trying to slap the journalist standing up showing what he is that he is a person who does not have respect not even in public that is exactly what he is showing here. I want you to pay attention and watch this to see the amount of ignorance and wickedness of the people who is about to, you know, be your leaders. Because, of course, he has actually occupied in advance a leadership position under the selected regime that you have in that country called Nigeria. Listen to him for you to see the epistle of your predicament. The epistle of your predicament when people who does not have respect, even not even in a public places, when they speak, and these are the people who are saying that people are overrated. Who knows Femi Fanekayo, other than being in a political space in Nigeria, looking for where to... He is like a hyena looking for where to go and, um, you know, eat the one that is already done. Listen to it. I'm saying this on live TV. What? 
I'm saying this on live TV. What? No, put, put that thing down. Let me address. What type of stupid question is that? What type of stupid question is that? Bankrolling who? Mm -hmm. Do you know who you are talking to? Bank you are talking I will not to take God. Any questions from this man. What type of insulting question? You are talking is that? to God. Which which bankroll for to do what? Who can give me money for anything? Mm -hmm. Who do you Nobody. think you are talking to? Mm -hmm. Bankroll what? Okay. Go report yourself to your publisher. Okay. Bankroll what? Okay. Please don't insult me here. Okay. All right. I don't want to take any questions from this man. Okay. But it's too, I could see from your face mm -hmm. before you got here how stupid you are. Don't ever talk to me like that. He could see from his face before he arrives here how stupid he is. You know what is going on here. This is the reason why Nigeria police, they kill you when they look at your face. Because when they look at your face and see maybe you have an accident, you have a scar on your face. They call you scar face. You are a criminal. They shoot at you. They kill you. They harvest your organ. You can see the evidence of it. That he can see at the, with, by the face of the journalist that the journalist is so stupid by the face. That is, they look at your face to judge you in Nigeria. They look at your face to kill you in Nigeria. They look at your face to see, say you are a criminal in Nigeria. Not by doing due diligence, not by investigation. So you have come to now understand that everybody that is being killed in Nigeria is by me looking at their faces. They kill them. They judge them. They now decided this is a criminal because his face is ugly. Because he has accident and has a scar on his face. Because he had a hairstyle. So automatically they are criminal. This is exactly what this man is actually, you know, saying here. When they look at your face, they have actually decided whom you are. Judging a book by the cover. Listen to it. That. Who do you think you're talking to? Bankroll who? You think, you think that I, I, I'm one of those ones you'll be... From who? From how? When? Where? How? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a small mind. Mm -hmm. Very small mind. Okay. Don't judge me by your own standards. I've been in politics since 1990. I'm not one of these politicians you think will just come. I was okay. taking... I've been locked up how many times by this okay. government? Okay. Suffered. Locked up. What made you locked up? I've been up? persecuted. Okay. Unlike that most of the politicians you follow for brown envelope. You. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't ever judge me by that standard. Okay. I spend, I don't take. Okay. You spend, and I'm not you a poor man, I've never been and I'll never be. Okay. Bankroll how? Don't ever suggest that to me. Okay. Sorry. I think he got They say to him, sorry, sir. So the reason why I am bringing your mind back to the memory lane is because you forget so soon. You forget very easily. These are the people on the lineup on your presidential select these are the people who will be maybe in your media in your media or will be occupying a significant position under the rulership of the selected you know candidate in nigeria they will not want to be held accountable for anything they don't want to give account to anything they don't want to answer to anybody for anything once they are in power he claim he is rich. If he is rich enough, why is he now coming to serve the public? Because when you are in a political space in Nigeria or in any country in the world, you are there to serve the public. So he is rich. So he is using his money to do work for the state. That's exactly what he is actually implying here. Who is bankrolling all your travels and all that? He, lo he lost it. These are your, the people that you will say, ah, this is my role model. This is somebody who says somebody is overrated. Somebody who is actually have no dent. The whole world celebrates them. Who celebrates Feni Fanekayode? He doesn't even, you know, when people talk about him in the media space, he, you know, you don't even get any... And if you, do, you find people not interested because they know that this is a political harlot. They know that this man, he does not belong to anything. He just belongs where the stomach is. Where the stomach is. So listen to it attentively. Let us fi finalize this. I'm, I'm sorry that was deeply insulting. I don't okay. often get annoyed. Impressed I've been doing this type of thing for many, many years. Okay. Don't you ever make that kind of suggestion to me. Sorry, sir. Thank you, sir. 
Bankroll who a former minister. Okay, what? Bankroll who a former minister. You know what I can advise this man? I think this man he has some problems. He need to he need to actually look after himself. I'm telling you. He has some problem, he need to look after himself. I don't want to give him exactly the type of problem I believe he has, you know, by his actions. Because some of you will see such actions, you believe that they are ordinary. You will not know that it is a medical condition. But let us continue. I don't want to, you must pay a consultation fee. Then I will tell him what his medical problem is. Let us continue. Sir, a lawyer. Sorry, sir. He got his language. Don't ever try that with me again, no. Don't, okay. please. Okay. You see me well. Don't ever. Mm -hmm. All right? I have a short fuse. Yeah, short fuse. Okay? Yeah, don't. I, I am right. Try it with others. Don't. I won't just say right now. I will hit you hard. Don't. Okay. And if anybody sent you to ask that question and okay. gave you brand new, go and tell them you got more than they bargained for mm -hmm. to do it. Very rude. It's not the standard of daily trust at all. And mm -hmm. I will report you to your publisher. No way. Uh, Thank you. Any other questions? No, no, no. Okay. Any other question? When you haven't answered the one as that was thrown at you. <laughs> Any other question? Very stupid. Oh, Nigeria. Hey. Any other question? When you did it, you couldn't answer the one that was thrown at you. Hey! Zu, Zu Alamni. Zu Alamni. <laughs> this is how they will give you account to anything. How they are being held to account. Why do you think they don't want you to protest? They don't want you to protest. They don't want you to cry. They will beat you. They don't want you to cry. In this 21st century. And the 200. Okay, let me say. Let me say that 20 million. Or let me give it to them 16 million. Politically correct. That 16 million is in power. In political power. Both in military, army, police. 16 million. Give it to them. 200 million people. Are being pushed from pillar to post. There is nothing you can do. You are being pushed from pillar to post. There is nothing you can do. By few 16 million against 200 million. What do you think you are? A coward. A coward. The fact that those evil leaders, the fact that those Biafran leaders, the fact that all these people, they watch how Mazen Namdekan was picked up in Kenya like nobody. And they condone it. They act, ah, he will scuttle our chances in 2023. Let's pick him up. The same way you might see one day they will pick up P2B. There is nothing you will do about it. They will pick him up one day. As long as DSS start doing their fake reports, that people are trying their chances to scuttle the inauguration that's supposed to take place so that there will be an interim president. He will be picked up one day like nobody. And there is nothing you will do about it. You will watch it and play. Because I Because if I what we are doing, if I that is all these people, you know, don't allow yourself for these politicians to deceive you. I have told you time without number. If you find Pitobi, come and tell you no way, case me a cool down, relax, this and that. to Because when we to we told him when he was going. We told him they are not going to give it to you. They will use you to waste our time. We told you people. Be truthful for once. You people that are affiliated to be one Nigeria will have a greater, better Nigeria. We told you. Why don't you confess? You can't. Because you live a lie. A life in infamy. It has actually transformed your medulla oblongata. 
your brain not to be functional the way in its appropriate functional manner. You can no longer reason. You can no longer see, you know, the bigger picture. You are afraid of change because they have taught you how to navigate and live with your problems. Then you have no other way than to fight, you know, to live with it because they might kill you. This is how it is. Now let me reflect on the reason why you see all this rubbish happening. And I want you to know, I want you to know, pay very good attention. I want you to know that the project, Nigeria as a project, started in 1989. Or no, the project that they are carrying out today started taking place in 1989. That is the reason why everything you are seeing today Yesterday is better. Today is worse. Tomorrow is, is more worse than yesterday in Nigeria. Instead of you believing that Nigeria is going to be better, I want you to know that it is going to get worse. Prepare for that worse of Nigeria because you don't understand that there has been a long-term planning written in a black and white on what Nigeria will look like in this day and what it is going to look like. In the next five years, it is written and it is been acting. They are acting upon this declaration. That is the reason why let us reiterate and contextualize all these activities, shenanigan, division, and you know, forcing you to be in love that does not exist, forcing you to be one. In a very, very, will I call it, abusive relationship called One Nigeria. It is very abusive relationship called One Nigeria. Let us hear this Abuja Declaration 1989. That is the last one we will do. We will take some calls. We will take some calls. Let me bring in actually the phone number to call because we are going to take some calls um to hear your opinion because um of course what we see happening right now in nigeria it is it is it is something that is if you are following the algorithm in nigeria you understand that it is something that is bound to happen no matter how much in denial of it you are, it is something that is bound to happen. Let me place this number. It is uh, going to be a WhatsApp call only when I'm not going to take much call, but the ones who call first. It is in front of your screen, the number. I believe I have I placed it there. I don't know, but it's, it is correct. So now, before we take to call, did I placed it there so you add it on your WhatsApp. You will call. Now, let us go to this. The long-term planning that they had called Nigeria. The long-term planning. That's why things will continue to get worse. I hope so many of you are watching or many of you who still believe that something good is going to come out of 
Nigeria. I hope that you are watching. I want to place it where you will be able to see it while I am reading. What I am reading right now, it is what? It is Abuja Declaration 1989. Remember that, of course, we've been telling you that there is a plan to Islamize Nigeria. There is a plan to Islamize Nigeria. And it is written on a black and white. And this is something that is written. And they know how long this plan is going to take in order to, manif to come to manifestation. Now let us read. Let us read. It says, The Abuja Declaration is the frequently given to the uh, okay, communique issued after the Islam in Africa conference held in Abuja, Nigeria between 24 and 28 November 1989. Conference was organized by the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC. At that time called the Organize, Organization of Islamic Cooperation Conference. That was the conference where they make the declaration and it agreed to set up the Islam in Africa organization. Islam in Africa organization. Now let's read the declaration. The declaration was to effect that Muslims should unite throughout Africa. Muslims should unite throughout Africa. The, the curricula at various educational establishments should conform to Muslim ideas. The education of women should be attended to. The teaching of Arabic should be encouraged. And Muslims should support economic relationship with Islamic areas worldwide. Are you paying attention? It noted that Muslim in Africa had been deprived of right to be right to be governed under Sharia law, and they should strengthen their struggle to reinst to reinst in re reinstate to reinstate it the Sharia law. They should reinstate the Sharia law. The Islam in Africa organization was formally established in July. 1991 also in abuja and it has started its objectives it has started its objectives since 1991 that is the reason why you see things continue to get worse in nigeria and that is the reason why you see muslim muslim ticket today now have you now seen? I want to go to um okay, let me read commentaries on it before we go to this um before we go to Islamic organization in Africa. Now, John, John Cheswort, Director of Islam and Christian Muslim Relationship at St. Paulus, on, on St. Paulus United Theological College, Kenya. And John Azuma, Senior Research Fellow Akrofi Christola Memorial Center, Ghana have reviewed the proceeding at the conference on the decision to set up the I, IAO, Heather Degan, Heather Degan, Senior Lecturer in Cooperative Politics, Middlesex University, has commented more recently, Islam has adopted a liberating picture presenting itself as religion, which will, which will rest which will wrest countries from their neo-colonial dependencies and uh, ignoring the fact that it, it too was conquering, conquering and uh, colonizing force in Africa over the long, over the longi duri, over the longi duri. 
So they are reminding you that Islam is what the crusaders who came to conquer some lands in Africa, they are reminding you that you are depending on this, your, this neo-colonial, um, this neo-colonialism. So it is time for them to actually teach you that Islam is actually a conquering and a colonizing force in Africa over Longidori. So it came before the Western colonization. It came before the Western colonization. Hear it. The Eastern Africa Center for Law and Justice reports the declaration verbatim, but goes on to quote two other objectives, which it says were omitted from the IAO website. It also severely criticized what it regards as the real objectives of the IAO, Rafael Oduru, Project Director, Voice Your Vote, Nigeria. Okay, now. This is exactly where your problem lies. Because the, uh, remember before we talk about this, I told you that Buhari, let me show you something again. Let me show you something from the, from here. If you look at this picture here, let me zoom it so that you will see you will see it better. You will see it better. Did you see Buhari move to strengthen Nigeria relationship with Iran? It is a Channel TV who carried it. They move to strengthen Nigeria relationship with Iran. It speaks volume to what is going on here. Muslim Muslim ticket. Abuja declaration 1989 is in progress. Before I go to other commentary, let me go to um OIA. Let me go to OIA. Let us hear what this organization says says exactly the organization of islamic cooperation oic arabic now formally the organization of the islamic conference is an intergovernmental organization founded in 1969 consisting 57 member states with 48 being muslim majority countries the organization states that it is the collective voice of the muslim world and work to safeguard and protect the interest of the muslim world in muslim world in the spirit of promoting inter international peace and harmony the oic has permanent delegation to the united Nations and european union the official languages of the oic are arabic english and french it maintains various affiliated, specialized, and subsidiary organs. With the framework of OIC Charter, the member states had a collective population of over 1.8 billion as of 2015, accounting for the under and quarter of the population. The collective areas is 31.766 meter um i don't get that one i didn't get that one the collective area is 31.666 meter kilometer um something like that meter kilometer did it? i was i'm not very good with geography but now let's go to the history a fire was started in okay it's, uh, let me there is something i want to show you from here let me try to go straight to the point because i don't have much time 
On the 25th of September 1969, an Islamic conference, a summit representatives of 24 Muslim majority countries, most of the representatives being head of state, was held in, Ra in Rabat, Morocco. Resolution was passed stating that Muslim government would consult with a view to promoting among themselves close cooperation and mutual assistance in the economic, scientific, cultural, and spiritual field inspired by the immortal teaching of Islam. Six months later, in March 1970, the first Islamic Conference of Foreign minister, Ministers was held in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. In 1972, the Organization of the Islam Conference OIC, now Organization of Islamic Cooperation, was founded, while the Al Al Aqsa Al Aqsa fire is regarded as one of the catalysts for the formation of the OIC. Many Muslims have aspired to a pan-Islamic institution that would serve the common political, economic, and social interest of the Omar Muslim community since the 9th century, in particular collapse of the Ottoman Empire and the Caliphate after World War I left a vacuum. According to its charter, the OIC aims to preserve Islamic social and economic value, promote solidarity amongst member states, increase cooperation in social, economic, cultural, scientific, and political areas, upholding international peace and security, and advance education, particularly in the field of science and technology. Okay. I am still far. Just one moment. Let me look for the right, the, the particular place that concerns what we are talking about. You know, all these things, the places, member states. Okay, let's see the member states first. The places I have seen. Okay, listen to the member states. Algeria, Benin, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Chad, Comoros, uh, Djibouti, Egypt, Gabon, Gambia, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Mo Morocco, Mozambique, Niger, Ni Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Somalia, Sudan, Togo, Tunisia, Uganda, Afghanistan, Azerbaijan, Bahrain, Bangladesh, Bur Brunei, Indonesia, Iran, Iraq, Jordan, Kazakhstan, Kuwait, Kazakhstan, um, Lebanon, Malaysia, uh, Albion. These are an, in Asian, in Asian world. So, have you seen there is a, there are many more, but you have seen that Nigeria is part of them. So, but there is some. Something very important I came across while researching on this. I don't know why I cannot pick it up. Something very, very important that I came across while reading this thing this afternoon. Just one moment. Okay, let me read this alternative declaration. 
before maybe it is where I'm looking for. In 1990, another declaration was, pro was promulgated purporting to be from the 1989 conference and which France which, we, we, France Weyers, Weyers, or Weyers, Weyers, and Professor of World Christianity and Interreligious Relationship at Rodbaud University of Nijmengen. Nijmengen. Regard as a forgery because it does not correspond with the declaration made at the conference at the conference regarding Africa. It says that among other things that only Muslims should be appointed to strategic posts. Non-Muslim religion should be eradicated. Nigeria should become a federal a federal Islamic sultanate, sultanate and western law should be replaced with sharia which then regard this as as indicating a more militant aspect of islam in africa and the comment that some aspect directly conflicts with official islamic teaching so not this one this this is when we started you know when people started understanding the declaration this was what they started adding towards this declaration in order to confuse the narrative of the declaration that is already there and being implemented slowly year by year terrorism in africa is going to increase it is not going to you know go back because what I am looking for, the one I am looking for, it is where they actually made it clear that they cannot allow infidel. They cannot allow infidel to rule over them. And that word, it is the word I have heard so many times from the Northern Coalition Group. I have heard such word which I read from this declaration from Northern Coalition Group several times. Let me see if I saved. I thought I saved it, but I did not. Commentaries. So what I am going to do, if I don't find that particular place where I am going to read, because that particular area, it was actually very clear on their agenda. It was very, very clear with their agenda, their plans. Let's see it in Islamic Africa religion. So while we are looking at it, uh, um, while we are looking for it, if you have anything to say, you can call us, you can call in right now. Let me continue to look for it because I believe that is the last thing that I am actually, I have in my list before we call it a day so if you want to call in you can actually call in right now while i am still looking for it because it is very very important and this even extended to so many african countries that i never even expected that this their madness is going to extend to but 
it is not surprising i am going to look for it we are going to expose it so that you will know what you are going through in nigeria and the reason why it is what it is today so those of you who want to call in the number is on the screen you call us on whatsapp i will take your call on whatsapp if you want to call in while we, I am still looking for it, it will give me more time to relax and find it. The declaration was to the effect that Muslims should unite throughout Africa. Okay. Now, this one that says the declaration was to effect that, that Muslims should unite throughout Africa. The curricula at various educational establishments should conform to Muslim ideas. The education of women should be attended to. Okay, now... If you look at this, even this path that we, we have read, you will understand that in our land today, when you hear that people are learning most Islam, people are learning how to read Quran in Arabic in Biafra land, they are teaching people Muslim um, Quran in Biafra land, it is part of the agenda. All these Fulani stood you call govern governors, in Biafra land, all of them are going to lead you straight to this long-term plan of Nigeria to be Islamized following the other nation because Nigeria is a very, very big, the, you know, the giant of Africa, of course. Once they capture the giant of Africa, of course, you know that they have captured the biggest. So, that is exactly the reason why they have to be bringing it to your curriculum. Last year, you heard that there was people that, you know, people are learning how to read Arabic Quran in our land. They are now taking it to everybody to learn how to read Quran. Now, let us go. Let me touch on this history. On the 21st August 1969, a fire started in, okay, I think, um, a fire started in um, Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, Amin as Hussein, the former motto of Jerusalem called the uh, Asun, a Jewish crime, and called for a Muslim head of state to co convene summit, to convene summit. The fire which destroyed part of the old wooden roof and an 800-year-old pulpit was blamed on the mental illness of the perpetrator. No, it's not what I am looking for. So what I'm going to do is that we are going to reiterate on this. I'm going to reiterate on that. But what that area that I am actually looking for, because there is a lot of things here. It says that one Muslim is better than is better than you know more than two infidel one muslim is better than more than two infidel that's exactly what i am looking for i can't it is a different link 
it is different link I can't just just one moment Now we will, we will come back to it. That's what we have to do. We will come back to it. We have to come back to it. I cannot, I cannot find. I thought I saved that link of this. I thought I saved the link. But unfortunately, I did not. There are many links to it. There are many things that is connected to this. But anyway, since we can't find it, the most important thing is that we have actually, I have delivered the message that we are here to talk about. So this evening, morning and afternoon, depending on where you are, don't forget that what we are looking for, it was actually where they said that you that is not an a muslim you are an infidel and there is no way an infidel will become a leader there is no way an infidel will become a leader of a muslim so this is part of this declaration but it has its own special link which I didn't remember where I clicked. I thought that I saved that link, but unfortunately, I couldn't I didn't I couldn't find it right now, but I know that I will find it and I will bring it to you. Very importantly, it is for you to know and understand that this Muslim Muslim ticket you see going on in Nigeria, it is actually an agenda. It is a project that is not unconnected to this Abuja declaration 1989 that we are dealing with that is exactly what we are seeing right now that is exactly what we are seeing tinubu is now going to actually implement this project because number one is that they are going to use him they are using him to actually bring this core muslim islamic state into nigeria of course the breaking all in to the Nigeria military facilities last year or two years ago, it is actually part of the plan. They have the database of Nigeria. Don't forget, you see these Yoruba people that are actually saying that it is their turn and they are going to rule over you. I want you to remember and mark my word today. While they are trying to protect Lagos, while they are trying to protect Lagos, believe you me, <laughs> a lot is happening. A lot is happening. While they are trying to protect Lagos, a lot is happening. Fulani is going to overwhelm them because, of course, you, you know that the problem is that Fulani Amarokwanonyan won't know Zakuyanafio. They don't know who is who because they see you as long as you are not called Muslim. You are an infidel. And that is the problem that many people in Nigeria does not want to understand. That keep on clamoring for one Nigeria. All these our uh, uh, um, political leaders. What you call political elite. Political um, the governors that is coming from the eastern region. I want you to know that these people have become fallen in stooge. When you give them money. They denounce whom they are. They become whom they, you know, they, they fall and they want them to become. That is exactly what drives these people. That is the reason why they make sure that they marginalize you. Because of course, it is in the eastern region you find most Christian in Nigeria. 
the most Christian in Nigeria, the, the, mo the biggest amount of Christian in Nigeria is in Eastern region. True or false? And that is the reason why it is very difficult for these people to give an Eastern region man a leadership that he will be there for eight years. Why do you think Obama came into in between good luck Jonathan's regime and they promoted um, promoted um, this guy in uh, that died Buhari? Because Obama is also a Muslim. He is a Muslim. If there is Islamic State to declaration in Nigeria, he is going to enjoy it. These are the, this is the reason why he knows about the declaration, how they want to Islamize Africa. How they want to Islamize Africa. That is the reason why he made sure he promoted. This is direct promotion. This is the direct promotion. He makes sure that um, he he they voted good luck Jonathan out, and they voted their Muslim brother in. That is exactly what it is. So the fact that he is an uh, um, uh, he was a president of United States. Don't forget. The United States, what they do most of the time is they go into these Islamic countries, nations. They are working hand in hand with Islamic people. That is the reason why they are able to control, manipulate them, make them do what they want them to do, give them guns, make them to go and form a rebel somewhere. It is part of the project. So for you to know, whether you like it, you love it or don't like it, they work with them. So that is exactly the reason why all hands must be on deck right now for us to restore our dignity, for us to restore our territorial integrity. We are not against their Islamization. We are not against their Muslimization. All we are against is imposing more, you know, imposing it on us. We are not Muslim. Imposing it on us is the problem that we must resist at all costs. And how are you going to resist it? It is by coming in now and pro demanding for what is rightfully yours. How will you do it? You see, Nigeria has stopped you from protesting. Peaceful conduct. They have killed you for the sake of peaceful conduct. It is now for you to now find another way to show your grievances. Go and switch off all these tabs that is giving them whatever that they are using to oppress you. That is what you need to do. That is exactly what you need to do. You come out to protest peacefully, they kill you. If they find you military, uh, Nigeria army of conquest, they are all over the place killing people. So what do you think that is going to save you? Of course, yourself. Yourself, you are going to save yourself. Because this Tinubu regime that they are, DSS is actually reporting, they are trying to scuttle this, they are trying to bring interim president, they are being insecure. Mazen Nam De Kano must be released because the Igbo elite that are the reason why Mazen Nam De Kano is there. Their um, Igbo presidency has come and gone. They are still delaying in the name they are going to court. They are looking for something to do. There is nothing will come out of it. They should get over it. They should demand for the release of Ohamadike. They should call, they should request, request for the release of Mazen Nam de Kano. Because if they refuse to do so, Miliagezu, 
Ogamohu man na yoku. These people are full and stood. They are actually part of the project because they are the ones who are going to sell you in the hands of these people who see you as an infidel. Islamic State. They will sell you. They have built the biggest mosque in Ab Abony, Abony State under the regime of Devil Omahi. Hope Uzodema moved emotion to start marrying off our women to Fulanis. Is that not Islamization agenda? It is. Because their women will never marry you as an infidel. Why would they want to come and marry your women? Women of infidel. Why would they want to come and marry your women? But their women will never marry you. Because you are seen as an infidel. You cannot even touch them. So they want to marry your women. In order to emasculate you. If they find opportunity, they kill your men. They, they marry your women. They will totally emasculate that community. That's what they do. But so many of you will be there saying it does not concern me. It is not my business. It will not reach me. By the time he gets there, I have fly abroad. I will take my family to go abroad. You will not even see it coming. You think abroad is going to be safe. Go and read the book of Isaiah 13. It is not going to be safe. Go and read Isaiah 13. For you to know it is not going to be safe. That the time is now. You need to do everything. To make sure that you be. You, you create. You go home. And build yourself. Go home and establish yourself. It is about home now. It is about home now. Don't forget. It is about home now. You must go home. And re-establish yourself. It is time for our people to bring their support towards this quest for the restoration of Biafra. The land of Elohim in the face of this planet. The only thing that is going to stand to challenge every religion that they are going to impose on you. The one that the European has imposed on you. It is the one that you are trying to understand. Talk more of them trying to impose another on you. With a Sharia law thereof. How are you going to survive? Tell me. How are you going to survive? It is a pity. It is a pity. So it is important. If you have anything to contribute towards this program. You can call in. The number is on the screen. A WhatsApp call. We are going to end this program in the next five minutes. In the next five minutes, if you, if you call in now, you will bring your contribution. If you don't call, I, know, I will know that you agree with me and no objection. And then you go ahead and implement what we talked about. Very, very important. Because we need to make sure that we show Nigeria that we are not... You know, we are not piece of paper. We need to show them that we are human beings. We have feelings. As long as they continue to screw us, as long as they continue to make us to feel like we are not human. Police brutality. Extortion. But human body pass extortion. Now the whistleblower that was actually been that is been dealing that is de been dealt with in Anambra State. I don't know what Soludo did about it because I did this program a um, few days ago. I don't know what Soludo has to say about them prosecuting a whistleblower who he was an IT consultant for the police. Where he blew the whistle that people are extorting human organ and investing human organ and extrajudiciously killing people in the name they are criminal and possessing their properties. 
that was the what whistleblower blood and they actually started using the same people that was captured in the whistleblower's testimony they are using them to question the whistleblower they are using them to uh, you know they arrested the whistleblower they put him in a in a in a police custody without presenting him to court because he committed no crime they want to rip you off every right you have as a human being they want to take away every right you have as a human being if you don't act now you will never get it right it is now for you to rise up and act if the international community believe that you are you are overreacting ask the international community when they kill you when you are peacefully protesting what did they do they did nothing they watched it and they you know they say it's all right why is it that when you are now going to explore every other possible means for your voice to be heard because you are being killed on a daily basis you are imposing many things that is not of you in you they are imposing it on you do there is nobody that is there to speak for you nobody is going to do this fight for you except to you you need to rise up use that energy you use for p2b because p2b era is finished except if he is going to be ignorant to tell you to advise you that next year um four years time that they are coming back they are not giving up like i said if he tell you that that you should come down and relax we are coming back in four years time we'll all put it to why you see we'll all put it to poor you see because you want to ruin your life when he said he will run abroad where he have 15 million in his offshore or said you're born abroad which plane is going to take you do you even have a money for plane ticket you don't these politicians are sorted their families are in abroad they are making you rally around them he has failed he didn't deliver because he did not agree that nigeria can never do something right nigeria can never give the people what they want nigeria will always do what they want for themselves those few people few individuals in the political space they do what they want they give you middle finger they tell you screw you there is nothing else they will do and you continue to have you know take it in swallow it without complaining they will continue to do it if you come out to complain right now they shoot at you you need to now draw or draw a possible a, 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 an alternative means where you must get your voice heard let them say as long as you are not endangering the life of those whom you are out to protect as long as you are not endangering the life of anybody whatever you can do to make sure your voices are heard by the international community by the united nation be it going to switch up that oil pipe that gives nigeria oil it is in your land you can do it it is obtainable then you show your grievances through through, through that means because there is no other means possible that you are going to let your voice to be heard you are not allowed to protest you will be shot at like animal military are all over your land in biafra land killing people on a daily basis burning buildings bringing down buildings ransacking villages military that is supposed to be protecting the war you know the country during the time of war or during the time of this uh, state of emergency or the state of disaster is there any declaration of state of emergency in biafra land the answer is no is there any declaration of state of disaster in biafra land the answer is no why then is there a present of many military and they are killing people shooting sporadically at innocent youth killing them reducing your population that is part of the emasculation that they are planning to do with you while hope Uzodema is marrying your women to Fulani. In case if you don't understand it, you need to start understanding it right now. 
Because tomorrow they will say we are inciting violence. Like Mohammed will come and lie on the social media. Uh, it is not the way it is. People, something me and you and the whole world saw. Like Mohammed will come and change it. And the international community might agree with him. That's what they do. Nobody is representing you out there. It is only you against the world. So we need to actually come up with what we can do to defend ourselves. So, I believe we have tried. We have tried, and I am going to call it a day. I am going to call it a day. Great and wonderful people of Biafra, lovers of freedom all over the world, I guess... You agree with me. I guess we are on the same page. So we will do it again tomorrow if need be. If the space occur, we will do it again tomorrow. Until we meet again. Stay safe. And stay informed. Bye for now.